Yo. Turk was first. <laughs> What's up, Turk? What's up, Trip? Water cooled, smooth studios. Hey, Mike, Yoeri, Josh, Chris. Oh, it wasn't a minute early, sorry. There's no winning, you know? There's no winning. All right, I uh, I pulled out an old friend here. You you guys may recognize this, not the plane, this, the Sky Park. <laughs> it's kind of uh, kind of feels like it takes too long to like find a route with On Air Company lately, or I find one that's not like good enough. Or it... I was trying to find find a flight. Was it last night? And. Uh, I basically had to choose between a 40 mile trip and a 700 mile trip on the freelance option. So it was a little annoying. So I decided to, uh, to dust off the old sky park to see if it could help me speed up finding routes. So, um, yeah, this thing, <laughs> I checked their discord today and somebody in the discord asked the question that I was asking myself. They were like, Hey, they said something like, Oh, I haven't used this in like a year. What's new. And then someone else goes, nothing has been imp nothing has been updated in a year. And he goes, okay, well, see ya. <laughs> Just like left. So um, yeah, apparently the the last update this that the Sky Park had was, or I think it's under settings. Yeah, here, June second, twenty twenty three. This was the last update it got. Until then, like up until then, they were updating it like every month or two with like new routes and like tours and I love this thing but it's just like I guess they just kind of abandoned it um but anyway I, I think it's still faster to find find a route with this than maybe the limitations from on air company sometimes yeah on air company gets an update like every week um, anyway, I dusted this thing off and I found, uh, where's the route I just found? This one here. From Tapello, Tapilo? Tupelo? Tapello, maybe? To Montgomery? Uh, so this, it's 168 miles, so it's pretty good. Highest obstacle. This is something that's nice about Sky Park. I, I wouldn't say to buy this since it never gets any updates anymore, but if, if it did, I would say buy it because it, it was awesome. I just, it's just a bummer they weren't, they're not updating it in so long. Or maybe they've abandoned it. Um, yeah, it shows like highest obstacle. Tupelo? It's Tupelo? Um, yeah, and then you, I'm paying money. Oh, this is the pay you get, and then there are fees because I'm teleporting my plane. But this thing is super, super, it's it's almost like using freelance routes in, in on our company where you just fly whatever plane you want, and just hit go, and it's just kind of, it's easy to just get started. All right, and then to Montgomery, so KMGM. I was, I need to, uh, you have to hit the load button here. I, I forget very often, just like I did with On Air Company, to hit the load button and then to hit the deliver button when you get there. But I'm gonna go over to Skyvec or over to uh, Sim Brief and get the, get this put in. Top to MGM. All right, K top to KMGM. It doesn't do anything like passengers or um, payload or anything like that. All right, forty P forty six Tango, the Piper M five hundred, and wow, that is the whole route. Now let's do something a little. We need more than one waypoint, right? Give me this more southern route. IGB to MGM. All right, sounds good. I'm going to use say intentions as usual. The whole gamut of tools got everything running. All right, I'm going to get my notepad up on the side. To pillow. And what is it? Montgomery. Montgomery Regional, KMGM, Vegas Baby. All 
Hey Steve, what's up? What's up, Pilot Dave, Raccoon, Chris? Okay, Tupelo, Montgomery, I'm making my notes in my notepad app on the side screen. Got San Tension started. Excellent. Um, I had to top off the oil after my last flight. I had a little bit of a low oil situation, so finally had to do something about it. I think I should pump the tires up in this, though. And the brake pads. Replace them before it's too late is all it says. I think we'll risk it with 59%. Is that good? It doesn't tell us... Uh, it says they're designed to last about 130 hours. I think I have like 30 hours or something on this. Let me check the airframe hours. How do I find that? Um, it's in here somewhere. Engine is 25 hours. I guess we can fill them up. At least do the, the um, maybe not the tires themselves or the brakes, but just fill them up. 55 PSI for front. Sorry, 70 for the front, 55 for the rear. Oh, these are a little too, too much. 70 and 50, how are they overinflated? What's going on here? Oh good, you can click and hold. All right, 70 PSI. This takes forever though. Even rapid clicking, it only goes this slow. It's simulating us removing the air from the tires and checking over and over again. All right, that's fine. 70 and then 55 on the rears. Let's do this. Bear with me, everyone. We're releasing tire pressure. Yeah, high air pressure, it says, risk, increases the risk of a tire blowing out during hard landings. Psh. No risk of that, of course. Look, the right tire is worn quite a bit more than the left tire, too. 69%, nice, versus 77. I guess I land my right tire down faster and first more often. All right, 55. Lower it for better off-road traction, yeah. All right, let's bring this to 58 to match. There we go. Okay, that looks good. All right, and then everything else here says okay, so I think we're good. Tire pressure, all of the lights are good. Engine status, oil status is okay. I topped that off earlier. And battery status is good. Okay, flight plan import. Bring up Navigraph on the side and import it as well. I don't know when they made this change in um, Navigraph charts, but in the top, you have to now click like this little, there's a little tiny like square button next to the drawing button. You have to click that to get to these scaling and rotating tools, which wasn't the case before. So now you have to click when you used to not have to click and it's very annoying. I don't like it. Wonder why they did that. Um, water cooled. I'll paste it in the one I grabbed. I just grabbed one that had two VORs just so we had more than one waypoint. Um, and 25,000. All right, 814 on our fuel. So let me do that in here. So total fuel weight, 814 pounds. Does it estimate my fuel? I don't think it does. And we're not taking any passengers. I guess we'll bring uh, front passengers so we have somebody with us. Yeah, I wish it would I wish it would show me or I should put the chalks on. 
I wish it would show me um, the estimated fuel in pounds. I guess I could add it from here. So 814 plus 3752 would give us 40, 4566. 4569, okay. All right, let's load in real time while we're um, putting the flight plan in. I'm gonna put it in Volanta, and then I'll make sure Navigraph's all ready to go. And we can see the fuel truck in action. It's been a while. Oh, MU2 tonight. Nice based. Is that the, is that our fuel truck right there? Or is that a GSX fuel truck? Oh, is that ours? No, that's not it. This might be ours. We'll find out. It's hard to tell. Because I have GSX on, or at least I have it installed, there's all these other fuel trucks. All right, three minutes for a fuel truck to arrive. All right, until then we can crack the door open back there. Today I'm flying as the redhead with sunglasses and we got a dog in the cockpit with us just to keep things, uh, keep things different. There we go. Got some sweet shades. And we got a pup. This is Bandit. All right, two minutes until fuel arrives. The fuel truck in this thing is awesome. All right, let me grab the route and paste it in chat. And I'll paste it in my notes as well. All right, there it is in chat. And then I'm gonna check what the VOR names are. All right, IGB, oh, <laughs> we kind of only actually have one waypoint because it's using the Montgomery VOR as the second one, which, yeah, anyway. First waypoint, let's see, IGB. Now oh, there's a bug in, uh, there's a bug in Simbrief. When I point at IGB, it just says top of climb instead of what I'm pointing at, which is the VOR. All right, let me look it up in Navigraph or on uh, yeah, Navigraph instead. Just so we know the names. Okay, the Big B Columbus Vortac, Big B, B I G B E E, and then I assume MGM is Montgomery. But well, let's double check, just to be thorough. Yeah, Montgomery Vortac. All right, we just got runway one, eight, and three, six here. All right, so let's get the A sauce going. Maybe we can get the GPU connected while the fuel truck's coming in. See if it interferes. I don't think it interferes with it. All right, fuel truck, where you at? There's a fuel truck over there. Where's our where's our fuel guy? Four seconds. Okay, arriving. Whoa, what? How did I miss that? Did it just teleport here? I don't know. It's been a while since I've shown this on the stream. Because I haven't been flying the M500 all that much. Oh yeah, the fuel truck actually connects one side at a time and fills you up in real time. 
No pass. Or we. I put it as one passenger, but I, hopefully we don't have to wait for the SUV because it's just the co-pilot who's already in the plane. You know, the dog. Uh, you wish they had a German short-haired pointer? Oh, do they not have one? They have a pretty good variety, but yeah, it's a bummer if they don't have one that's close enough to what you want. Yeah, the dog is pretty excited. All right, let me get the radio going and the flight plan here. So we imported from Simbrief already. Let me make sure it's in there. To Pello, to Montgomery. This is an hour and 22 minutes. And then we got the METAR here. Altimeter is 29 or 58. I'm just gonna hit B to set that. Yep, it matches. And then flight plan is good. IGB to MGM. Okay. Let's get the ASOS 133525. We have the METAR, but yeah, I guess the METAR is good enough. Uh, oh, there is a tower here, actually. Yeah, let's get the ASOS so we have the code. The, the Well, it says ASOS, not ATIS, but let's see what it does in, say, intentions. 525. A raccoon option, yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> T broken at 3800 feet. Broken at 4900 feet. Temperature 22. Oh, wait, it's not playing it on my right device. Hold on. Altimeter 2958. Visual approach is in use. Advise on course heading altitude and if flight following is requested. Read back all runway and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information, Fox Trot. All right, Fox. Two below regional airport. Two below. Information, Fox Trot. Two three five three Zulu. Wind two zero zero at eight. Visibility one zero. Sky conditions. View at two two zero zero feet. Broken at three eight zero zero feet. Broken at four nine or zero zero feet. Temperature two two. Dew point one nine Altimeter 2958. Visual approach is in use. All right, so we got information Foxtrot. And if flight following is requested. Read What's up, Darren? Read runway and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information Foxtrot. Tupelo Regional Airport information Foxtrot. 2353 Zulu. All right, Foxtrot. And now let's pull up ground 21825. 825 is ground and the tower will be 18775. Ground 18 Quebec, uniform request. 775, there we go. Instructions to gate. Looks like fueling's done. Beautiful. Alright, let's see the status now. It says passengers boarding vehicle. We don't actually have passengers, so. I'm gonna just close the cabin door. Unless we're waiting, like our co-pilot's already here, so we're good. Our FO. Chihuahua passenger. There is a little tiny dog. I don't know if it's a Chihuahua or not. But there's a... There's kind of, there's a little dog in there. It's close enough. Um, okay, let's get this thing started up. Let's see, we go battery, avionics, manual fuel pump, manual ignition. We leave this start bo mode button alone. It's in manual by default. Turn on our nav lights. Our fuel condition is in off. And now we just hit the push start button. And then we wait for NG to get to 12, I think. And then we move fuel condition to run. And we turn on our alternator generator. So simple. Love it. Yeah, once the NG gets into... Oh, it's already at 16. 
All right, to run. Oh, well, let me change the camera. Whoa, that's weird. Okay. NG's in the green. Everything else is in the green. All right, generator on, alternator on, fuel pumps to auto, ignition to off. Get the MFD on, make sure we're flying in the right direction. All right, let's call up for our clearance. I'll do the fuel condition in, or the uh, environment control in a second. Real world, real world weather looks nasty. Yes, yeah. I'm hoping we get some nasty weather. And oh, we are in a Piper, so I'm good Romeo with my call sign. Holding short of taxiway Delta Falcon 762 Foxtrot Romeo. Two Peller Grounds. Piper 6063 Echo looking to pick up our IFR to Montgomery. Mike, call off Mike. All right, we don't have a departure procedure in there. We just have pretty much one on-route waypoint. I was trying to avoid that, but yeah, we're just going to the big BVOR. And then pretty much direct to Montgomery. Maybe they'll surprise us. Climb and maintain 25,000. Departure on one tree 5.6, squawk tree 410. Expect runway 18 for departure. Information Foxtrot is current. All right, clear to Montgomery. Vectors to Big B then as filed. Climb and maintain flight level 250. 135.6, squawk 3410. We'll expect runway 18. We have Foxtrot. Piper 63 Echo. All right, runway 18. Set that up here. Piper 63 Echo read back, correct? Yes. And it said runway 28 the expected one in Montgomery. Set 28. All right, climb and maintain. We're going straight up to flight level 250. That's awesome. It'll take us a while to get there, but We have no departure procedures, so. All right, 250, flight level change and heading mode. Over here, runway 18 is on a 182 heading, so we'll get that set up. 182. All right, and then we're going all, I think all the way up to 25,000, we wanna do 160 knots. I'm gonna double check the checklist here. It's in cruise climb. Yeah, 140 knots. Let me see. Yeah, if you're going higher than 20,000, oh, 125 knots. All right, 140 or 125. So we're gonna do 125. Light level change, 125 is set. 29 or 58, that's what we had from Adis Foxtrot. What's up, Andy? We need a fox ops. That would be awesome. Yeah, they can do all sorts of animals. Hippopotamus, water buffalo, dinosaurs. Um, yeah. Oh, the uh, the invisible passenger is here. We've already closed the door because we have the dog on board, so we don't need him. Oh, they're waiting for the cabin door. All right, fine. Fine, come on in. Imagine if they like had a had the passengers actually walk in and be sitting in the back. That would be amazing. Taking selfies, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the door's ajar. It's a problem. All right, takeoff config is yelling at us because of flaps, so we'll put flaps ten and rudder trim to the green tab right here. Do 
we need flaps 20? No, it still says takeoff config. It's probably for lighting. I think we do flaps 10. All right, are they in yet? They're boarding right now. Maybe in flight sim 2024, the passengers. Yeah. What is that? Oh, that's somebody on the radios. Uh, are the passengers on? It looks like they're on. Let's get this noise. This noise out of here. I was uh, adjusting the flaps while they were going. Oh, whoops. GPU is still connected. My bad. GPU off. Chalks removed. And fuel weight 799 pounds. Okay. All right, great. Let's get our taxi light on and pedo's good for now. There's a limit on how long we can leave it on, so we'll turn it on once we're near the runway threshold. All right, let's get taxi instructions from ground. We're expecting something like November Alpha Golf. I don't know. We'll see how accurate they are. That guy's either very far or very quiet. Tupelo Ground, Piper 63 Echo, ready to taxi to runway 18 with information Foxtrot. Let's see what they give us here. This is us. This is our mood. That's how happy we are right now. Echo, taxi to runway 18 via Alpha, hold short of runway 18. 18 via Alpha, hold short runway 18, Piper 63 Echo. All right, so it just gave us via Alpha, so we can go wherever we want. Here, here. Oh, yeah, the Dukes. I know, Elaine, it's going to be amazing. I w I've checked the website like every day on Just Flight just in case somebody somehow didn't realize it got released. Yeah, I'm definitely checking. It's going to be amazing. The, uh, the level of... I mean, it looks like a... Um, a Comanche level plane like I didn't think anyone could match Comanche but it looks like Black Square is, is gonna do that though I will say it doesn't look like there's a walk around that's one thing that sets the Comanche apart but I mean all the rest is so insane it, it, it looks so good is Sky Park a good DLC I wouldn't recommend it anymore just because they haven't been updating it since last June I don't know if it goes on sale or something it might be it's a it's a it's still a good way to find routes really quickly but Something that used to be really nice about it was um, they would add all these tours and stuff and like tour the Caribbean, tour this part of the world, this part of the world. Um, and those things were really nice, but I guess they just kind of stopped doing that last year. All right, we're still getting a takeoff config. I'm not sure why. Anyway, this is Mike. We're going to turn right on Mike. For Alpha, we're going to take Alpha to runway 18 at Golf will be full length. I I did I do like Sky Park. I just I can't say I can't recommend getting it without them updating it. You know, it's kind of weird. I wish I could say to get it because yeah, it's nice, but it's so it's just almost a year outdated now. It's kind of a bummer. Let's check our trim down here. Looks like I'm not quite neutral. All right, we got our heading set. Flight level change is set to 125. 125 knots. Altimeter is set. Uh, I need to set our transponder code. Whoops. Transponder code is 3410. Okay, that's set. Tower on All right, we're going to switch over the tower, 118775, and we're going to put in our departure frequency, 135.6. All right, 135.6. What's up, underdog? How's it going? All right, let's go up to the overhead again. We need ignition on manual, fuel pumps on manual. 
landing and strobe light on and we'll put pedo and stall heat on and taxi light off all right takeoff config is no longer enunciated so that's good if you still have that make sure you have your flaps if you're flying the m500 make sure your flaps are at 10 or at least not in the zero position and make sure you have the rudder trim set in the little green over here around it's between like two and a half and three and a half Tupelo Tower, Piper 6 3 Echo, holding short runway 18 IFR departure. All right, we're expecting uh, vectors to Big B. Which is to the south. Piper 6 0 6 3 Echo, Tupelo Tower, winds 229 at 1 1, runway 18 cleared for takeoff. Runway 18 cleared for takeoff, Piper 6 3 Echo. Alright, 18 cleared for takeoff. Excuse me, boys. Alright, we're already cleared for takeoff. So in this guy, you can over torque it and damage the engine. So just pull it up to like 1300 on the uh, torque. After 1310 or so, it uh, starts yelling. And our rotation's 85. Whoa, why is it doing that? Those gusts. Ready for the park. The ground handling is so bad lately in this sim, I, I swear. I'm just like ice skating every time. What are the winds? It's only five, knot, five knots of wind. It's so weird. All right, gear up. All right, 400 AGL. All right, flaps up, 500 AGL. Trim it a little. All right, autopilot on. We're about to switch over to departure, so they'll call that in a second. Nav mode on, and turn to the left. All right, torque is still good. Can add a little more torque. Yeah, I don't know why it says vectors to the first waypoint, but it doesn't it doesn't tell me to like fly runway heading. Two plus hours and uh by two Charlie holding short runway one eight, ready for departure with information box truck. Well who's that? That's one of us. One of us. One of us. I should turn off uh chatter so I can hear you guys only. There, canned chatter only. Twin Cessna Tree 752, Charlie Tupelo Tower, wind 229, runway 18, Oh, we need to turn our fuel pumps and ignition back to auto now. Done. Taxi light was already off. And everything else is good. Oh my god, I didn't put on the uh, control, I didn't put on the uh, environmental control system. This needs Piper to be on normal. No contact departure. Lead air pushed in. Over to departure, Piper 63 Echo. That's uh, good. We don't suffocate. So, all right. PSI is rising. Hopefully, uh, no. I'm gonna lower our. I'm gonna lower our rate of climb. I'll go 150 knots so we slow down a little bit because I messed up the environment system. So we don't uh, let it pressurize a little. Let the PSI rise a little bit. I think that's the right thing to do. All right. Let's go to departure. Departure Piper 6063 Echo 4400, climbing flight level 250. All right, and then as we climb, we can use our rudder trim, pull out our rudder trim based on this right here, our slip skid indicator. So if it's to the left. Piper 6063 Echo Columbus approach, radar contact, fly heading 162 vectors to Big B, Columbus. Then our navigation, keep it under 215 knots until reaching flight level 250. All right, fly heading 162 direct to Bigsby, and then resume on navigation, Piper 63 Echo. 
I think it gave us a speed re speed re uh, restriction too. Keep it under 215 knots. ATC is Australian. Yeah, they said they introduced more of a variety of voices, even in the US. All right, is our cabin altitude? Type six three echo contact Greenwood Center on one two two point five. What? One two two point five Piper six three echo. Twenty two five Greenwood Center. What's Greenwood Center? Greenwood? Whoops, one two two point five. Oh, let me look at the transcript. Greenwood Center. What is is that? No, that's not real. What's Greenwood Center? There's no way that's real, right? Greenwood Center, Piper 6063 Echo, 7,000 feet climbing, flight level 250, direct Bigsby. Or it's not Bigsby, it's Bigby. Bigby? Piper 6063 Echo, Greenwood Center, roger. I feel like I've heard that guy's voice before. I think they, I think they need to add, like add. I don't know how many voices there are. I feel there's, like there's like a dozen, or twenty maybe. I don't. I, I think they. Yeah, I feel like I hear the same voices pretty often. All right, I'm gonna bring this down to 125 knots. All right, we're at 8,000 feet. Cabin pressure, it's not climbing yet. What's the worst that could happen, you know? Hyper 6063 Echo, Greenwood Center. Contact Columbus Approach on 135.6. No. Back to Columbus Approach? Back over to Columbus Approach, if you say so, dude. 135.6, 63 Echo. All right, here comes 10,000 feet. Let's get our landing light off. Nav and strobe will stay on. Pedo heat still on. Auto, all that's good. All right, back over to Columbus approach, I guess. Uh oh, I think the bug is backwards. Uh, it's trans transferring us over and over. This might, this this might have to do with. I think they're reworking a ton of stuff because they ha announced that Navigraph thing. Roger, radar contact. Can we get our IFR clearance to Montgomery as well, please? Uh, Twin Seven Five Two Charlie. Five Two Charlie, hot on our tail. Um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like the, uh, this bug is, like, back. Where it's, uh, changing us over and over. Twin Cessna 52 Charlie, cleared to Montgomery Airport as filed. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect flight level 210, 10 minutes Give it a more departure. torque. Departure will be 135.6, squawk 5120. Yeah, the same problem with the in-sim ATC. Uh, yeah, I... I know they improved it and it, it got better for me. Oh, that's you, Chris? Yes. Clear to Montgomery and file. Twin Cessna 52 Charlie, clear to Montgomery and file. Twin Cessna 52 Charlie. All right, let's get, let's get, we're back on Columbus, appro or Columbus Approach. Columbus Approach Piper 6 Re Echo, 12,000 climbing, flight level 250. I just, uh, if they tell us to switch again, let's give them some attitude and see what happens. Papa 6063 Echo, Columbus Approach. Roger. Roger. I want to stay on with this guy because he sounds cool. Now, let's see how our uh, cabin... Our altitude's not raising yet because the... I think it's... What is the PS I have to get up to something first? We're at 13,000 feet. It says the cabin altitude is 3,100 feet still though, right? So maybe it doesn't have to rise yet. I need to read more about uh, about pressurization. Stop switching me. Yeah. Memphis Center on one three five point nine or twin seven five to Charlie. Oh, racing games. Oh, this, this you like this stitching work here? Ah, uh, yes. The uh, the leather worker, the professional leather bound book and cockpit interior creator also works on Forza cars. It's the same. It's the same person. Same every time. Josh, thanks for gifting five memberships, man. Dude, thank you very much, sir. 
John. Oh, Trip got one. Nice. Aaron, nobody important, and CCJD. Enjoy your stools. Pull them up, boys. Boys and girls. Pull up those noisy stools. Make sure you're wearing pants when you sit down. They're not the highest quality. Look out for splinters. Uh, even though Josh is the one that paid for the memberships, he's also going to be paying for the cigarettes that you'll be sent for your passengers. It'll be about seven or eight tons of cigarettes should last you three or four flights. Oh, is the, the crosswind? 47 knot crosswind. Beautiful. Trip finally got a membership. Oh, crappy weather. We're hoping for it. Here we come. All right, what are you guys flying out there? 414 TBM 930. We got a longitude or a, a CJ4. Python Beautiful. Oh. Echo Columbus Approach Contact Greenwood Center on no. 2.5. Yo, Columbus Approach. We just got past the Greenwood Center and then back to you and now back to Greenwood Center. Could you let me know uh where we're supposed to stay, stay, please. Why do you keep ping-ponging us back and forth, my guy? Piper 63 Echo. The sim has it in for you. 72 knot crosswind. Wait, what do I have now? 49. 49 knot crosswind. 53 nose uh, headwind. Nose wind. <laughs> What's up, Delta? Piper 63 Echo I apologize for the confusion. Maintain present heading and altitude remain on this frequency for now. You are under radar contact and flight following to Montgomery. We will ensure you have a smooth transition to your destination. All right, 18,000. Let's go standard Barrow. All right, we'll remain present heading and uh, we're still climbing, by the way, to flight level 250. We're going to stay on this frequency, Piper 63 Echo. All right, let's go. Uh, where is it here? Uh, uh, PFD options. Standard. There we go. All right. Standard barrow is set. Piper I wish. Six three echo. Roger. Climb and maintain flight level two five zero. Climb and maintain flight level two five zero. And what happened to your accent? It was thicker before. Six three echo. Anyone game on consoles? I used to quite a bit. I just I have a Steam Deck now, but uh. I used to play PlayStation 4 quite a bit back before I had my PC going again. I heard his feelings. Yeah, he apologized. He said stay this frequency, so that's good. How's the Steam Deck? Oh, it's awesome. Dude, the Steam Deck is so well made. Hey, what did we just talk about, controller? You know? I love your accent, but I hate that you keep trying to pass us off to uh, Greenfield Center or whatever that is. It's not even a real center. 6 3 Echo. What is this guy doing? <laughs> uh, the, the Steam Deck is incredible. If you can afford it, especially now that the OLED version is out, it's even better than it was before. The thing is amazing. All right, over to Greenwood Center. They better not pass us back to you. 6-3 Echo, 122.5. Unbelievable. What is Greenfield? What is Greenfield Center? Greenfield Center Piper 6063 Echo, flight level 210, climbing flight level 250. We're back. <laughs> oh, you got a Steam Deck, Andy? Piper yeah. 6063 Echo, Greenwood Center, Roger. Steam Deck is so good, yeah. I'm, um, I have a friend that recently got one that only had a Switch. No, only. I forget if they had a console or a Switch, but um, yeah, they they never played PC games and um, got the Steam Deck and they're stoked. <laughs> it was like there's it's always during a sale too. It was like right in the middle of this the spring Steam sale. I was like, good luck. This is where you end up with like 800 games that you've never played in your library. It begins, you know. Ask him where Greenwood Center is. Oh, yeah. Hey, Greenwood Center. We're wondering what uh, areas you cover. Because I don't see you on the uh, airspace map. What is Green... 
What is Greenwood Center? Can you explain? 6-3 Echo. Yeah, what center are we supposed to be on? I mean, here are the bounds right here. We're supposed to be in Memphis Center. <laughs> I don't have no idea what Greenwood Center is. Steam Deck is good. Piper 63 Echo Greenwood Center provides air traffic control services for a designated area of airspace. The term green is not an official ATC term. It may refer to the color used on some maps to denote controlled airspace. Greenwood Center's airspace typically includes higher altitudes used by overflying en route traffic, and we provide services such as flight following traffic advisories and IFR control. What? Now, is Greenwood Center a real thing? There's no way, right? Greenwood ATC? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. All I get is a business center in California called the Greenwood Center. <laughs> yes. I'm just going to debug that real quick. <laughs> debug Greenwood Center. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> All right, I debugged it. I said Greenwood Center. We should we should be on with Memphis, okay, I think. Debug logged. Question mark. There was a Greenwood Center in California in 1967. Oh, like um, an actual <laughs> base track. <laughs> the real Greenwood Center is the friends we make along the way. <laughs> Thanks, Raku. Thanks for the 4.99. I'm sure in three or four minutes the alert will come through. Thank you in advance, sir. Old air com uh, old Army Air Corps thing, huh? Somebody just blew past us at 2,000 miles an hour in the Honda Jet. <laughs> Versa did. Uh, all right, I was I was trying to look at what uh, until ATC interrupted us. What what everybody's flying? All right, Cyber is in the M500. Ryfly is in the P180. Oh, I do not. I haven't flown this. I probably said this a million times. Oh wait, it says early development. Wait, what? Is this a flight effects, flight effects plane? What's up, Rory? Welcome back. Speaking of spring and Easter sales in airports, may have tripped and accidentally picked up a few more. <laughs> Uh, is is there an airport you don't own in the US Delta? Delta's got everything. You went to the car wash, Andy? Nice. Was it one of the drive-through car washes or did you have to uh did you have to get out and use the hose yourself? Thanks, based. Thanks again. The real Greenwood Center is the friends we make along the way. Unicorn, rainbow. Unicorn. Rainbow. <laughs> I think Turk is probably rocking the unicorn rainbow, as he does. Wait, Turk, are you here? I saw you in chat. I don't know if he's flying along with us today. Oh, yeah, there he is. He's right in front of us. There he is. Oh, and, and, and Josh, of course, in the... Uh, I thought Josh wasn't flying today, but there he is. He can't get away. You can't get the man away from the vision jet. And what's water cooled in? TBM 930? You guys are like in formation flight. Raccoons in the MU2. Delta 1562. There's too many good planes. To flight level yeah, that's not us. Traffic ahead. Too many good planes. I feel like a broken record. I always talk about the. I always talk about the MU2. But now that I'm back in the in the M500, I don't feel as bad about neglecting it. All right, I think it's about time we get the snacks out. It's probably really cold in here. Let's see. Oh, the AC is off. 91 degrees. All right, I'll get the coffee out. 
ta-da. All right, coffee is set. Uh, no snacks yet. And let's get the AC on. It's 91 degrees. Turn it on high. I don't understand this thing because it says auto. The auto and manual... Uh, does not, uh, I'll look in the manual, but... Auto and manual is a switch here. And then there's a box drawn around this whole section that says auto next to it. So I would assume that this does nothing because it's in auto mode, right? But then over here, the manual section in this box has a switch, a momentary switch you can hold up or down, warm, cool. I don't understand. And it, I, I would, I would, think these should be flipped, right? First of all, it seems like the auto button should be over here and then a box should be drawn around auto. Why, why would this be auto? Does this mean automatically make it slightly cooler than warm? I feel like this should be the auto switch and you should like set a target temperature somewhere. I don't know. I think it's weird. All right. The fan is on high. Lead air is on. Passengers are upset. No food. Whiny babies. Give them their... We'll give them their macarons. Macarons. There you go. Cheese plate. Danish. They're instantly happier. All right, we're cooling it down to 86 degrees. Have you had to fly one plane in Microsoft Flight Simulator and no other? See, I can't... I think it would be this plane because... I can't see flying Comanche speeds and altitudes forever. I can fly low or high in this. This thing can go up to flight level 300, 30,000 feet. So, yeah, I, I would, if I didn't want to go higher in altitude as an option, it would be the Comanche because it's so good. But right now it's this. And I think in the future, in, in a few weeks, it might, we'll see how it goes. It might be the Duke. The, maybe the turbine duke, the turboprop duke, might uh might might dethrone it. I don't know. The systems just seem more in depth, but I don't know. It, it, we'll see how it goes. It's gonna be nice flying something new. What is the duke? Does the duke have a? It has, does it have a G one thousand in it? It's a double. I have to double check that. I think it has a G one thousand. I have it. Um, I have it bookmarked. No, no, it's... Oh, no, it doesn't. It has 530, and the GTN 750. Oh, man. 750, yeah. I might... I don't know. Uh, I'm so obsessed with the G1000 and so used to it, and I love it so much. Like, I did fly the TBM 850 when it came out. I love the 850. Echo, contact Memphis Center on one tree, 4.775. 34775, Piper 63 Echo. I just I just keep going back to G1000s. 134775. Okay, he's he's passing us along to Memphis Center now. Memphis Center Piper 6063 Echo flight level 250. Analog's the way to go. G1000's too easy. I mean, anything that has a really good autopilot. Whoops, my slip skid is messed up here. Let me. I didn't uh pull that Piper out. 6063 Echo Memphis Reset Center. Reset the rotor trim. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the G1000 is very nice, obviously, but like, I mean, you're going to end up using autopilot, right? And ILSs and uh, LPV approaches and stuff. So, I mean, it's still easy in terms of navigating if the autopilot's good. But I don't know, the, the, how in-depth the systems are, it's, uh, it's going to be real. I'm going to use it. Like, I'm getting it day one. I'm going to stream the night it's released. Um, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be awesome. I think the the reason why I like I was drawn to this more than the 850 was like the wear and tear. Southwest 912 proceed like direct all to the block this stuff is direct really really cool. I can't look at it right now, but all of the wear and tear on the on the M500 is just so nice. It reminds me of the Comanche, and I think there's wear and tear on the TBM, but I think it's more for failures, right? Like you don't do like tire pressure and battery wear and tear and decharging and tire tread and all that kind of stuff you get with the Comanche. 
So it seems like the the Dukes are going to be the best of both worlds. I don't I th I don't know if they have that level of uh, wear and tear though. I don't know. I I really like the wear and tear stuff more than just the engine components. That's why I like the Comanche so much. Is like sumping the fuel, checking the tire pressure, making sure the flaps and the ailerons are you know have full range and work correctly. Like doing the walk around, all that stuff just is so it's so nice. We will see. I'll be on it day one for sure. <laughs> like all of us, I assume. The one thing that I wish we had in, in like the more analog planes is just the HSI. I wish we had a G5 or like a digital HSI of some, some sort because I hate manually changing the course every single waypoint. It's so tedious. Like, I find that less tedious than doing like the gyro drift calculate, like the gyro drift compensation and stuff like that. Just changing every single leg, changing the course. And it's not like a uh, slave to the GPS or anything. I, I really wish it was. Uh... And it looks like the black square, like the Dukes, it looks like they have that HSI you always see that has the heading and the course noms at the bottom. So I think you have to change the course every single time yourself. <laughs> And yeah, the G1000 also makes it so like... Echo Memphis Center, expect the RNAV runway 28 approach into Danali. All right, we'll expect the RNAV runway 28, Piper 63 Echo. All right, RNAV 28. Um, yeah, and I, I know the G1000 also gives you like, you don't get any gyro drift, that's automatic, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, it changes your, changes your course, your desired track every single time you hit a new waypoint. It's amazing. All right, let's go ahead and check out the RNAV. Actually, let's check it out over on Navigraph first. Um, RNAV for runway 28. Over here. Now let's go to flights and then choose the approach. RNAV runway 28. Um, did he give us, I don't think he gave us the initial approach fix, but there's only one eye coat. So we'll just add it to the route. Hyper 6-3 Echo. Descend and maintain flight level 020. What the? Do you mean 2,000 feet? 6-3 Echo. Flight level 020. Flight level 020. This happened last time, too, didn't it? Hyper 6-3 Echo. Negative climb and maintain flight level 250. What? <laughs> We're already at flight level 25063 Echo. Okay, let's get the RNAV set up in here at least. RNAV runway 28 LPV. We'll put in the only initial approach fix that's there. Minimums are 397 Barrow. So we'll call it 400. All right, the FAF is Tebek or Tebok, Whitby. Yep, that is correct. All right, and then we'll just load it for now. Top of descent, about eight minutes. Uh, actually, we need to remove the on route. Remove the on route waypoint. So it calculates it's based on us going directly from MGM to the initial approach fix. All right, seven minutes. Over to Kansas Center, 122.2, Piper 63 Echo. All right, 22.2 for Kansas Center. Oh, that sounds so good. Chris is upgraded to the, uh, to the office chair. Congratulations. Beautiful. Look at that thing. You hear those wheels? You can tell. They're only slightly used. I had to save money somewhere. Thanks for the six months, Chris. All right, 122.2 over to Kansas Center. Kansas Center, Piper 6063 Echo, flight level 250. 
So supposedly the Dukes are going to come out next Monday, right? Or at least sometime next week. I think it's like rumored it'll be Monday. Oh, did they say Addison Center? Anison Center. Not Kansas. Whoops. <laughs> That's embarrassing. An Anison. Not to be confused with the the Jennifer variation. This this is a center. All right, RNAV 2-8, and I'm just cleaning up my notes here. All right, yeah, all I have is RNAV, and then Aniston Center, 122.2. All right. It's not bad. The view's not bad. Wait, did I did I mess up the badges? Did it, it showed the it showed the blue chair, didn't it? Or the greenish chair, not the purple one? I think I might need to fix the uh, I think I might need to fix the notification. I might have messed it up. It should have shown the purple chair. Let me test the notification again. Yeah, it's showing the green chair for six months, which is wrong. Uh-oh. We got a bug. Got to fix this. It's nighttime on your sim. Oh, yeah, I always turn it to day. <laughs> It's just, it's just nicer. Nicer sightseeing during the day, usually. All right, our top of descent's coming up soon. Four minutes. Let me go ahead and set our lowest altitude here, 2,000 feet for now. And hit VNAV. And I'll try to fix this notification. And then replay it so we can see the purple chair in its glory. All right, 2,000 V path is enunciated. Diamond Tree 4, Alpha Bravo, traffic 10 o'clock, 4 miles level at 9 or 5 zero, zero. Looking for traffic, Diamond Tree 4, Alpha Bravo. Alright, three and a half minutes for our top of descent. Oh, you hit your TOD already? Ah! Too close for comfort. So close, literally went right through us in this EJ4. You just hit your top of climb. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix this. I want to see the uh, I want to see the purple chair. So I guess we haven't seen a purple chair on the alerts yet because I didn't have it uh, configured correctly. It would seem. Okay, members must have messed up the math. Oh, there we go. Wait. Oh, it says when sponsored for at least seven months in a row. I think they fixed a bug. Okay, okay. I think I know the problem. Hyper 6063 Echo Anison Center, descend and maintain 17,000. Expect RNAV runway 28 approach into Danley. Descend and maintain 17,000. We'll expect RNAV runway 28 approach, Piper 63 Echo. All right, our top of descent's coming up, so they're stopping us at 17,000. And top of descent's not for two minutes, but we're gonna start this now because we're gonna have to level off there. All right, 300 ground speed, three times five, 15, 1500 feet per minute. And pull the throttle back to about 500 pounds. 500 foot pounds, which is really what? 50,000? All right, there we go. I think I think I know what happened. So um, I think so. When looking at my configuration, I have everything set to one month more than it needs to be to get it 
working to where it was supposed to be. Or uh, to get it working correctly, I had to add one to each number. But now I think maybe they fixed the bug and now I don't have to do that. All right, let's test this again, Chris. Yes. Oh yeah, the purple. There it is. That's a nice mustache. That's a pretty nice mustache. It's getting bigger every month. All right, one more time. Got to see it again. See, those are some quality wheels. Those are like the rollerblade style office office wheels. Office chair wheels. And you have armrest now. Gamer chair status. It's pretty nice. Thanks again for six months, Chris. What's up, Riz? Uh, Rory says, Kip, do you use an external device to control the G1000 knobs? I do have a couple knobs that I use. Um, I was using the Bravo, but on my Verpal, uh, they call it a control panel, but it's basically a it's basically a mini throttle. Um, it's just really small, and I save a lot of desk space with it. I was using the Bravo for a long time. It has an autopilot section. I basically am doing the same thing with the encoder knobs, like the rotary knobs that are on this. Um, so I can move it into... Oh my god, another purple chair! Delta was six months. Gamer chair status. Beautiful mustache, Delta. And I swear you look just like Josh. Your chairs look identical. It's crazy. Yeah, thanks for six months, Delta. Appreciate it, dude. Um, so yeah, Rory, I do, I do every now and then. Um, so if you look at the selected altitude, how it worked with the Bravo and how I have it set up with my new like Verpal throttle thing, there's like a um, a five position w switch. I use that to select what I'm going to change, and then I roll the encoder knob to change it. So right now it's set for the altitude. So you can see the selected altitude moving. Now with those same controls, I'll switch it to vertical speed instead, and then rotate that same. Uh, encoder that that rotary or that like it's like a turnable knob you know so if I turn that you can see the vertical speed changing now so I have that I only need it in three positions because I have a second one that's just for the heading change um, so here I can just turn that one independently it's another rotary knob just for that but if you look up pictures of like the Bravo throttle quadrant you'll see what I'm kind of talking about um, but I do try to do a lot of things with my mouse just so everybody can see it on the stream. Um, which is why, like, whenever I switch over to Navigraph, I have it, like, bring up that window on the stream. Even though I'm seeing it on another monitor. I just want you guys to see as much as you can when I'm, when I'm making changes. Just so it's not a mystery of, like, why, why things are changing randomly. Uh, do I ever do really long flights? Pretty rarely. I, I get too bored of a flight that's more than like an hour, hour and a half. So I try to keep them pretty short. And that's that's generally why I'm still in GA all the time and flying like turboprops is I prefer shorter flights. And it seems kind of, uh, I guess it's not out unheard of to do a shorter commercial flight in a jet that's like an hour or two. But um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been trying to mix it up and do both. I did a Phoenix, uh, did Phoenix, Phoenix flight last Tuesday. But I wanted to be back in the uh, M500 today. And then maybe we'll have the Dukes next week. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if I'm going to... I'm going to buy both of the Dukes, but I'm not sure which one I'm going to fly. I mean, I'm going to try them both, but I'm not sure which one I'm going to end up liking more. I think I've watched all of the Dukes videos, and I forget if there are failures beyond... I, I forget if there's wear and tear on any components other than the engine. Like, engine and battery. That's just why I like... I like this, is like... Look, the tire air pressure is changing while we're in the air. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, and you have, like, bulbs, engine, battery, like, all those, all these different components. So, I, I don't know, I think this is really well done. It's cool to see the, the wear and tear in action. Alright, so we're going down. We're about to hit 17,000. Let's go to local altimeter. Did he give us the altimeter? Um, let me check the tran... Actually, let me, let me not check the transcript. I'll just ask. Can we get the altimeter setting for Piper 6 3 Echo. Need to get you in the Anatov. <laughs> Big boy cargo runs, yeah. 
Uh, Rory's looking for an external knob panel. It just, I guess it matters what you fly, like, the, the Honeycomb Bravo is still really good. Hyper 6 Tree Echo, Centerville, Altimeter, 2 9 or 5 9 -er. 2 9 or 5 9 -er, thanks, 6 Tree Echo. 2 9 or 5 9 -er. Um, I swapped out the Bravo with a Verpal control panel that is like a mini throttle. It's got four axes and a bunch of buttons and knobs and, and stuff like that. Um, if you look up the, or I can just, let me find the link for you. Uh, I'll just put the link in the chat. It's the, this is the one I got just because I bought into Verpal with the, I got the Verpal, um, left-handed stick, the Alpha, Constellation Alpha, I think it's called. Um, but yeah, this is what I this is what I grabbed. It's been like a month, maybe, mainly because I wanted something that was way less of a footprint. So this thing is it's solid. Like the build quality is amazing, as is all the Verpal stuff. But these might be too small. Like you can't really reconfigure these as easily. There are different handles, but you know you just have four of them, and the spacing is what it is. There's no like detents you can buy for it or anything like that. Um, but I, I like it. I, I have it mounted to the right side, and I have my stick mounted to the left, and it freed up a ton of desk space because I have a pretty small desk now. Uh, my desk is like, um, what is it? 48 by 24? No, I think it's smaller than that. Anyway, it's, um, yeah, I like, I like not having the Bravo up here because the Bravo just is absolutely massive. You change it to daytime. Yeah, it looks like we're headed into the soup. This is going to be awesome. Uh, but Rory, I think it matters if, you, if you're looking for like a combo thing, like you want a throttle, like the, a throttle quadrant with knobs and stuff like the Bravo has, or something like what I just showed you, the Verpal one. There's also, if you fly airliners a lot, there's like that, what is that, that mini FCU or what is it called? Yeah, mini FCU. I know, I think some of the guys have this. If you fly airliners all the time, this thing has gotten, from what I've seen, people seem to really love this. So if you fly the uh, Airbus especially. Uh, I think this thing's like $300 though, right? Um, yeah. That's supposed to be really good. Yeah, it's sold out. It's 269 US dollars, 270. And then you could also look at, like, if you just want an autopilot, you could also look at, like, the real sim gear stuff. Real sim gear. I've tried theirs before. I, I tried one of their Garmin units that kind of look like this. They're really nice as well, but they're, they're kind of light. Um, Plasticky and light. They work great, but the thing I didn't like was just that I had to, like, put my hand on top of it every time I, like, rolled this knob up and down. Because um, I would slide it around the desk. You know, I didn't have it mounted or anything. Sell an arm and a leg. Yeah, the G1000 panels. Yeah, I got the G1000 panels like when I um, was really getting into simming and I did spring for them. Bought myself a Christmas present. They are uh, they are sitting in the closet in case, like pretty much for if my girlfriend needs them to learn the G1000. I used them for a while, but again, I just, Got to the point where I didn't want them on my desk all the time, and I didn't want to hook two more monitor cables up, because you have two of these, basically, side by side. That's two more monitor cables and three USB cables for this, the audio panel, which is in the vertical orientation, and then the, the MFT, so it was kind of crazy. Uh, Riz says, did did you set this stuff up all yourself? Cleared for the R -nav run Do you mean just... Fly heading 277 vectors to I Cody. Descend and maintain 2600. All right, fly heading 277 vectors to I Cody. Descend and maintain 2600 feet. Piper 6 3 Echo. I didn't, uh, I was talking, so I missed part of that. Oh, he said cleared for the RNAV 28 approach, so he's probably going to yell at me. Um, so let's go and bring our altitude down to 2800. Wait for him to yell, and then I'll repeat it. VNAV. 
So to Icody, so we're gonna go ahead, we're cleared for it, so we're gonna go direct to Icody. Activate. That should give us a VNAV direct right away, right? Let me get VNAV again. Yeah, it does. So it also gives us a new VNAV profile, so we start down. I realized I didn't I didn't add my throttle back in there. Uh, yeah, Riz, what do you mean? Did I set it up myself? Like just the mounts and stuff? Yeah, it's pretty easy. Like it's consumer friendly. You don't have to know too much to set up. Set up your throttle quadrant or your stick or whatever on your desk. If you go with a mounting option. Tobias, what's going on? Uh, the wires are ridic ridiculously small and weak. Wait, which wires? Wires are broken. Oh, and your Bravo, really? I didn't realize you were having problems with the Bravo. Uh, Delta says, I love my mini FCU. Uh, there's a full-size model from a Chinese manufacturer coming out that's more like $100. That's nice. Double check our torque here. I'm going to bring it down to about 500. Seems to be pretty good for the descent. We're going faster than normal, though. 2,000 feet per minute. Usually, it's like more like 1,500. And if you bring your torque under, is it under 300 gear, it'll start giving you a gear warning. So you want to keep it above 300 until you get your gear down. Weather's comically bad? Yes. Here we go. He said heading 277. I'm not going to do that because we're going direct to the waypoint. Say again for 6-3 Echo. Danily, what's that? We're going to Montgomery. Do you mean Montgomery Tower? Six three echo. Yeah, it's it's late. It says Montgomery Tower over here. I don't know what he's talking about. Montgomery Tower one one nine or seven. Piper six three echo contact Danily Tower on one one nine or point seven. <laughs> All right, one one nine or point seven six three echo. Montgomery Tower, Piper 6063 Echo on the RNAV runway 28. Probably should give him our altitude. All right, pretty low on the torque here, down to 350. All right, so we're flying this guy right here. RNAV GPS to runway 28 into Montgomery. ATIS is 12675. We're going to want to get that. On COM2. And we can't use the mute unmute on COM2 um, to turn it off. So we're just going to put it here. Listen in and then we're just going to hit swap to bring it back. Whoops, 120. 12675. Eva point two zero. Altimeter 2963. Visual approach is in use. 2963. Advise on initial contact. You have information hotel. Hotel. Prattville Grubby Field Information Hotel. What field? 0115 Zulu. Wind 190 at 10. One Visibility 10. Sky conditions. Broken at 2300 feet. Solid overcast at 2900 feet. Temperature 24. Dew point 20. Altimeter okay, 2963. Visual approach. Alright, swap that off. Alright, so we have information hotel. What's up, Ben? MGM is... Oh, Danily Field. Danily. Like, K-San is Lindbergh. So why doesn't it say that up here? Is it just because... It's like... I, even the tower frequencies all say Montgomery. So if I go over to this, will it say Danily? This still says Montgomery. God, why did they move the rotation knobs? It's so annoying. Or rotation buttons. It just says Montgomery everywhere. That's so weird. Zero six three Echo Danley Tower, wind two three two at four six. Runway two eight clear to land. What? Cleared to land. Yeah, we're still headed to 
We're still headed to the initial approach fix and have to do a reversal. Piper 6 re echo. I don't think it knows about the reversals. Like it's looking, we're close to the runway threshold here. So they're just telling us clear for land, but we got to go out here. We're still descending. We got to get down to 2,600 feet. We got to make this reversal. And then over Piper here, echo, Roger. Continue to the initial we got to get down to 2,000 at T-Bock for the uh, final approach fix. So let's turn this down to 2,000 because we're cleared. All right, it's 10 degrees outside, so I don't think, yeah, we're not gonna need to anti-icing. We'll turn the landing light back on, 7,000 feet, a little late. Danley Field, yeah, how would I know it's Danley Field? I mean, I know that they're saying it, but um, without without reading it, it's kind of hard. <laughs> All right, cabin pressure's coming down, or cabin altitude's coming down. Everything else is in the green. And once we're on final, we're gonna put our uh, fuel pump and our ignition to manual. Landing lights are already on. Anti-ice is gonna stay the same. And we're just hoping to see the, see the runway before we get below 200 feet AGL. Skylane 422 Alpha. Mike, make left traffic runway tree zero. Let's see if the minimums are set. Making left traffic runway not tree set zero. here. Skyline I did set the minimums over Mike. here, though. We'll see if they come on. All right, so I coat. Oh, we can't see the. Uh, can't see the um, altitudes over here. Uh, ben says sand tensions is really good until you're inbound to land. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're doing, it's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they know about the bugs. We all want everything to work perfectly the moment it's uh, available. But... November 6, 4, Foxtrot, Alpha 2, hold short runway. Right, I'm going to pull back even final. more on the throttle here. Holding short Just keep it above 300 so we don't get the, don't get the gear two. warning. It's like MSN Madison, which is the Dane County Regional Airport. In our case, Truax the original. Uh, oh, from Wikipedia, of course. <laughs> yes, I should have consulted Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, I don't, it's it must be confusing for real world pilots if these don't say Danley on them, and they keep saying Danley Tower, Montgomery clearance, ground and tower, Montgomery departure, Montgomery Alabama, Montgomery Regional. And same on the uh, approach chart. Are we going to get a sweet break out here? I mean, the eight is set at two nine or six three, so I'm going to go ahead and get that set up. We have information hotel, um, and it said the clouds, the lowest were broken at twenty three hundred feet, and overcast at twenty nine hundred feet. So we're at twenty nine right now. Bringing that torque as low as I can. Once we finish this ascent, we'll slow down enough to get our gear down and our flaps one. Gear comes down at 168 and so is flaps one, which is 10 degrees at 168. Then 135, 118. And they said winds are 190 at 10 knots. Is this the best runway to land on? Runway 28 when winds are 190. So we got 28 right here. And the winds are coming from here. So it's pretty much a straight crosswind. Oh, you just got the Honeycomb Bravo? Nice, Rory. Yeah, the, it sucks what happened with Honeycomb recently, like with the Charlies, but the Bravo... I don't think you can go wrong with the Bravo. Oh, I mean, it sounds like, it, unfortunately, it sounds like um, Trip is saying he's been having issues with his. I I did have a problem with my Bravo when I got it, but I sent it back and got a replacement. Um, hopefully, the customer service is still that good if you have an issue with it. Straight crosswind. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, ben says I lost interest beyond ATC. Yeah, they're just, they're, they are just totally different products, though. Like, um, you can't say anything you want to Beyond ATC, uh, but you can 
you know, with some limited exceptions because of their terms of service. So there is there is a total difference, but they're both good. Um, like I've tried Beyond ATC and it's it's good. <laughs> uh, it's getting better and better as well. I haven't tried the traffic injection, but um, yeah, it, it does a really good job. Their voice, the the speed at which it replies to you is very very fast, but it is. Um, you only have a limited number of like responses, right? Like if you watch their videos with their UI, you just have um, a couple, like you, you, you have a couple options. You can't just say open-ended whatever you want. Um, partnership with Navigraph. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think they're, I think with Say Intentions because of the Navigraph stuff, they're having some, um, I was reading on their Discord. They're they're basically like replacing and improving all the data with the Navigraph data, so it could be wonky for a bit as it's uh, improving everything. Three seven five two Charlie Danley Tower, fly heading zero eight vectors for the GPS runway two one approach. All right, we're all the way down to one hundred and thirty four knots already. I'm gonna add a little bit more power. We're at we need to drop six hundred feet more though. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more power. Get this reversal done with. Heading 088 vectors for the GPS runway 21. Yeah, I think I think what's fun about yeah, they're just I don't know. I've I've said so much about the two, but yeah, I always try to stress like they're two different products. Like uh, beyond beyond ATC and say intentions have like very different goals. It seems like. I mean, once these bugs get fixed, like. I, I try not to base my opinion on running into a couple bugs because, you know, every product will have bugs. So I also try not to get, like, my hopes up and think that something is going to be 100% bug-free when it comes out. I think it's good that Say Intentions, you know, says it's a beta. All right, pulling the torque back even more here. How are we going so fast right now? Do we have a crazy tailwind? We don't. We have a crosswind of 20 and a headwind of 20. I'll just get down to 168 so we can get the flaps down. And double check that it's 168. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get the gear down. Danley Tower. We're, we're established on final RNAV runway 28 for Piper 63 Echo. All right, gear's out. Flaps one. Our minimums are minimums four hundred barrow, so we got a good we got a good ways to go here. What? We're already on the RNAV approach. Uh, we're already on the RNAV approach. We're established on final for runway two eight on the RNAV two eight Piper Six Echo. It seems to like um, forget what phase of the flight we're in. All right, 10 degrees flaps and gears down, three greens. Let's go ahead and get our fuel pumps on manual, ignition on manual, landing lights on. That's already on. All right, we have a top of descent coming up just to drop 600 more feet to get down to the FAF altitude. I think I have my, I have my gear down too early, I think, but it's fine. It's going to add a little more power. I just want to be all set up so I have less to think about when we're, when we can't see anything. All right, and then we have ignition on, stall, stall heater is inhibited just because it's so warm. Fuel pumps are on, 18 degrees. Can probably turn the pedo heat off, right? It's 18 degrees Celsius out. Luckily, there's no um, the um, what's it called? Um, oh my God! What's the name of the? I'm forgetting the thing that. Uh, oh no! I gotta I gotta look it up. I'm already forgetting. On the TBM, the um, it prevents things from going into the engine. Oh my god, what is it called? It's fixed in this, so we don't have to do anything with that. But if it was raining, we would turn it on. Why am I? It's been so long since I flew the TBM. 
Somebody will say it in three seconds. Alright, they didn't give us a clear to land, right? So... Oh, inertial separator. Thanks, Rory. Yeah. Inertial separator. There we go. Yeah, the inertial separator is like permanent in this thing. So there's no like inertial separator on or off. But I think we would have that on right now in the rain, right? <laughs> it's been so long since I've flown the TBM. I think, isn't there, there's one in the Kodiak as well, right? There's also one in the Grand Caravan, but I don't think, uh, I don't think I've ever used the one in the Grand Caravan. I think it's just set on all the time. Montgomery Tower, two and seven, five, two, Charlie, on final runway, uh, zero three. Wait, did they give you zero three? Isn't there a runway one zero as well? Twin Cessna 5, 2 Charlie Wind, 184 at 20, runway 21, clear to land. Alright, two miles to the FAF. This is where I, sh I should have waited until to get my um, get my gear down on my, my first nacho flaps. Yeah, say intentions is getting I mean I, I it's pretty cool they got a partnership with Navigraph. This is gonna be uh, I'm going to turn off the nameplate so so I don't feel like I'm cheating. I can see you guys on the ground. Runway 45. <laughs> is Say Intentions out? Yeah, it's in a, it's been in a paid beta for I'm since January, I think. Oh, I didn't hit the approach button. There we go. I was like, hey, look, the diamond. All right, glide path. Let's set our heading straight. Our go around is climb 3,100 feet direct head gap. So let's put in 3,100 feet. Land. Danley Tower, Piper 63 Echo, we got the field in sight. Yeah, I had the flapping gear down really early. Piper 63 Echo, say again, your last transmission. Field in sight, 63 Echo. He already gave us clear to land, but I guess I could have given him a pie rep Piper where we broke up. Say again, your last transmission. Disregard, 6-3 Echo. Now it's confused because it already told us to land. It's like, yo, we already told you. All right, flaps two. Two miles to the Piper runway. Say again, your last no, two, transmission. No, two miles to, uh, to Whitby. It's not going to shut up now, is it? It's just going to keep talking. Brutal crosswind. Yeah, they said 210 at 20 something. So it's, we're getting between 12 and 20 right now from the left. Montgomery Tower, yeah, it seems like they should have given us like runway 21 or something. Wind is brutal. 2-1 would have been perfect. <laughs> Winds are 2-1, 2-1, at 10? Or 2-1-0 at 10? Actually, it's more than 10 now. Twin Cessna 5, 2 Charlie Wind, 2 one two at 2-6 runway. All right, two, full one, flaps. Uh, this does not have auto throttle, no. If you want something about this speed with the auto throttle, then I would get the Vision Jet. Oh yeah, this is going to be fun without rudder pedals attached. It's our ground speed, 84. Yeah, I just have my stick for my rudder still. I'm, I feel like I'm becoming more of a minimalist. I did finally get a second monitor, but I've had my rudder pedals disconnected for like a month. <laughs> Do I fly other aircraft? Yeah, I've been flying the Phoenix a little bit. I flew it last Tuesday. I'm trying to get better at that. Oh my god, this is going to be horrible. Alright, autopilot's off. Whoa, whoa. Y'all dampers off. Dude. 
What? What is going on right now? Oh my god. Alright, this is a long runway. Let's see if we can get back over here. What the heck was that? Alright, we're just going to do a long landing. If there wasn't this much runway, we would just go around. That seemed so unrealistic. What the heck was that? At the last possible second, as soon as I hit disconnect autopilot, it's like, rah, freaking out. That is crazy. What? That was absolutely chaotic. Get the flaps up. That, that was so crazy. What? Same thing happened to me. That was insane. The gust, like, as, as soon as I hit the auto throttle, it's like the gust doubled. I, I need to watch the replay or something. I felt like the gust went from, like, 20 to, like, 60 knots or something instantaneously. What just happened? <laughs> what just happened? It, it almost felt like a bug. <laughs> that was insane. All right, let's get the fuel pumps off. All right, fuel pumps to auto ignition off. Hyper 63 Echo, welcome to Danley. Contact ground on 121.7. Over to ground, 21.7, 63 Echo. All right, good luck, guys. Let's see if it happens to everybody else. Well, you guys are mostly down. FX and Drake are on their way in, though. <laughs> good luck, boys. That was, uh, that was insane. I didn't like that at all. Yeah, I mean, we have a 9,000 foot runway. If, if we had a sh way shorter runway, I would have done a proper go around. My excuse is always, for the sake of this dream, just put it on the ground and start the next flight. You were lucky you had autopilot on until the last second, <laughs> like until you're touching down. Alright, let's get our landing light off, taxi light on, strobe off. All that is good. Let's set up our trim for next time, which will be soon. There we go. And we'll turn this off for now. Bleed air off. Taxi parking via Bravo, then at my discretion. Towards to Charlie. All right, 21-7, I think he said. You guys are just going to butter it, I'm sure. 12-43, have your approach descend. And maintain 4,000 clear to direct Cobham, join 27 localizer. Uh, do you have to have, say, intentions to be seen on multiplayer? Cobham, no, no. Localizer, the multiplayer is just the built-in Microsoft Flight Sim multiplayer. I'm, I'm on USA West. Post your landing FPM screenshot on Discord. All right. Let's see what we got here. Hawker 511, Hotel Alpha Hold, short of taxiway golf, awaiting further instructions. Uh, is it in group flights? Oh, it's probably under screenshots. 37 FPM? Incredible. I think I had like 70 something. Look at the windsock. Alright, good luck. Good luck, FX. Look at this windsock. <laughs> it's not even a full straight crosswind, but it's still absolutely horrible. He looks pretty stable. He looks more stable than I did. I wonder if the twin helps. Beautiful. The Chancellor. 
All right, let me get that, uh, get the parking instructions finally. Danley Ground, Piper 63 Echo is clear of runway 28. Can we get a taxi to the FBO? Only a few bounces. Yeah, I wonder, uh, I wonder how much of that was because I'm in a single engine. Like, turned off the autopilot, just like rotating completely from the center point, right? Just right here, just whoop. Piper 606 Tree Echo, Danley Ground Taxi to parking via Alpha. Have a good day. Parking via Alpha 63 Echo. All right, parking via Alpha. It's right in front of us. My God, the wind! I ha I'm doing like full right rudder. <clears throat> now I wonder if I should. Oh, can I decouple? No, I guess not in this plane. That doesn't make sense. You don't have like a tiller wheel. I wish you could like decouple the nose wheel steering from the rudder because when you're doing the rudder inputs, it feels like it's making it even crazier. I don't know. I'm doing like full right rudder half the time. The ground handling lately just feels so intense. Maybe I'm just flying to too many places with just insane winds. All right, we're going to take off in this though. We'll find another one. KLM nine four five cleared for the visual. All right, Josh, take it easy, man. Thanks for the five final. gifted again. Josh, really appreciate it. Niner will report tree mile final KLM nine four five. AI generated image. Yeah. Ah, uh, one foot per minute landing every time. Incredible. I'm going to do another short one though. It's only been, we're not even at two hours yet. Got to do more. Uh, Mesovage says beyond ATC looks promising. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. There's no doubt beyond ATC is going to be incredible. And the price is unreal. Like, I, I can't believe it's as cheap as it's going to be. It went from being the most expensive to be almost unbelievably and like worryingly cheap where I'm like, I hope they can afford to keep this project going. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going to be awesome too, especially with for people that are flying commercial and you want the traffic separation and all that. Um, Say Intentions is working on something with traffic as well. But yeah, I mean, beyond ATC for $30 one-time payment, it's crazy. I expect almost everybody will be using beyond ATC. But the, yeah, the difference is just, you're not going to have the multiplayer stuff. You're not going to be able to say anything you want to it. You know, you're, all of that. So I, I just see them as different products and I see them as both being amazing different products. <laughs> yeah, the co yeah, the competition is great. All right, nav light and taxi light off for now. Fuel pumps. I guess I have to shut the whole thing down Number to get a, to get a refuel, refuel refueled. So let's see that avionics zero. generator alternator. I already turned off the environment control three system. Three Bleed air is on is off, and we'll just turn the air conditioning off, and then pull the fuel condition to cut off. There we go. Get credit for that in the old logbook. Let's go over here. We're gonna get the next flight going. All right, we'll do unload real time. Cargo door. We'll let them out while the prop's still spinning. Very safe. Proceeding to the ramp via Foxtrot monitoring ground on one two one point five Cessna nine zero eight. Oh, the voice is so real. Couldn't tell if you were using Vatsim. Yeah, all of the like the same goes for um, the voices in Beyond ATC. Like all of the AI voice generation tech they're using is incredible. It's great. And you are hearing some other actual voices, though, uh, because Say Intentions has this multiplayer feature where you'll hear people on your frequency if they're on your frequency. Or you can turn it to play people wherever they are as like background noise. Um, so you will hear other people's voices, which is, you know, one of the features that makes it uh, a bit unique. All right, battery off. Let's get the GPU back on and connected. We'll start setting up the next flight. Let's see where we're gonna go here. Let's bring up Skypad to liver. Forgot I need to hit that. All right, water cool. Do it. 
<laughs> nice, Darren. <laughs> Darren's washing machine sends him a notification on his phone. That is pretty awesome. As silly as it seems, and like, <laughs> there is this, uh, I don't, it probably still exists. I don't really use like Twitter anymore or X, whatever. Even before it was X, I wasn't really using Twitter that much. But there was, um, there was this account called Internet of Shit. <laughs> instead of internet of things and it would just show everything that was like becoming a connected device it was just it was just great how much would i pay you to do an eight hour stream uh i would need like you need to rewind time 10 years probably for me to have the energy to do a 10 hour stream how much does a new heart cost um doesn't it, wouldn't an eight hour flight sim stream just get so boring though? Like after one or two flights, I'm like, all right, this is very repetitive. I, I, I've run out of things to talk, talk about and uh, we're just flying the same, similar routes in the same plane, so. <laughs> seven hour stream. Oh yeah, I did do a seven hour stream, yeah. <laughs> Turk setting the price. Yeah, every now, every now and then I'll just feel stoked and uh, and just want to keep flying. Uh, I mean, I'm going to do another flight right now. I think we might we might see a seven hour stream when the when the dupes come out because there's the piston and the turbine variant to learn, and just the complexity of all the systems that they've been showing in their videos. Um, like it just seems like it's going to be a lot of learning. So I'm I'm really excited like you guys are for the dupes. It's going to be great. Just a new heart. A low bargain. So reminded of the Big Lebowski. I, you need a toe? I can get you a toe by 3 p.m. You know, just... All right. Uh, let's go to Sky Park. All right. That's all done. Completed the job. Contracts. Am I level three now? There's like a setting in here where I can make it give me all of the routes, but I had to get level three first. Uh, I guess I'm not level three yet. So I don't have all of the contracts unlock, so, uh, unlocked, so it looks like we're not going to get everything. I think I can go up here and type in the airport code like this with a dash and get flights from here. No results. Let's try it again with just... Here we go. K MGM. MGM departures. There we go. MGM to PBF. How's that? 300 miles. Or we can go towards Florida. Let's see. Where's the weather going to be worst? Let's go over to Sky Vector. Let's see where the weather is going to be crap. Let me refresh this. Yeah, Florida's okay. We want to go north. Looks like we want to go northwest. So... We could always use time acceleration if it gets super boring. Right, I'm gonna do this one. Okay, good for turboprops. We have to get gas and electricity meters from Montgomery Regional to Pine Bluff Regional Airport Grider. 1500 and we will still be a little shy of level three. Feels bad. What's up, David? How's it going? Andy says, is Neofly any good? Yes, yeah, Neofly is great. Neofly is a really good alternative to um, On Air Company. So On Air Company has like the MMO light, if you want to call it that. It's got like, you know, base building. Like you, you put a pin, a flag in the map for your bases and stuff. And you can get into all that stuff. And has like virtual airlines and all that. For a single pilot stuff, if you don't want like all the those features that... um like the base camps thing and industries and all of that in on air company. Yeah. I mean, Neofly is free. So, um, it has some paid add ons. You can like donate to get new, some like, um, objects in the simulator and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, you can donate to them to help support Neofly. I find kind of all of the interfaces, everything except for sky park, the interface is pretty, Im pretty impossible. Like they're very, hard to learn. <laughs> Neofly and On Air Company are hard to learn. The interfaces of, I think. Uh, which is why I love Sky Park so much. Like, it's a very simple interface and there's, like, not much to it. It's a really good route finder. 
Uh, but yeah, give Neo try a fly. It's great. Neo fly is really good for um, for helicopter stuff too. If you do that, because they have some cool like VIP helicopter missions where you're like literally landing in like the front yards of mansions and stuff to drop off like celebrities in their yard or whatever. Like it's pretty cool. Um, David says, did you take your written negative? No, I, I signed up for Shepard Air and was studying for a little bit for like a, uh, for an AGI, but um, I have not been studying at all. So no, I haven't taken anything. All right, Chris, have a good one, man. Dude, thanks for six months again, Chris. Appreciate that. All right, let's save this. Let's get going. All right, 300 nautical miles, 600 foot obstacles. All right, so MGM to PBF. And go over to Simbrief. And we're gonna go up to New Flight. P46 Tango, M500. And we're going KMGM to KPBF. Papa Bravo Foxtrot. All right, should we take a couple passengers this time? I think we should. Let's do three passengers and 100 pounds of cargo. See how that goes. Look at this, we got a route this time. Tango Airway, Victor Airway, two Victor Airways. It's a longer, longer route. No departure unless there's like an instrument departure or a, an obstacle departure procedure. All right, generate flight. See how much fuel it says. Hit begin over here. Load the gas and electricity Tango meters. Tango Oscar, hold short of taxiway Delta. All right, we're going to do passengers, though. Ooh, fuel deficit minus 19 pounds. Delta tornado eight nine two Tango Should we uh, just take off overweight? We'll just take off overweight. Let's see how it goes. 1,139 pounds of fuel. Three passengers. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the route into the chat for you guys. I'm gonna clear my notes. So we're going from Montgomery to, what's PBF again? Pine Bluff. Dude, Ben, thanks for the $1.99. Dollar ninety nine face reveal. Thanks for the super chat, Ben. I appreciate it. Oh, Delta Tango has arrived. The man himself. He has a gaming chair and a juice goose. Can he be stopped? All right, we're gonna call the passengers in. <laughs> so funny. There's just nobody in the juice goose. It's a RC car. All right, so we're doing two passengers and I put like a hundred pounds of cargo. I think for the passengers, does it assume? It says three passengers. What is the weight of passengers? Sim brief passenger weight. Is it 175? 230 pounds. Oh, 175 for the person, 55 for their bags. Well, it's not going to double check it anyway. It's going to be fine. I'm just going to put in three random people. All right, there we go. We got 141, 119, and 218, and that's good. And then on fuel. Kilo Alpha, make a 180 degree turn and backtrack on runway tree zero, hold short of taxiway Charlie. It's at 1139 a block fuel. Degree turn backtracking on runway tree zero, holding short of taxiway Charlie King Air, 145 Kilo Alpha. How much is that in Jet A? I guess we'll just go to our max. So, all right, I, I, I guess the only way to do the fuel weight, can I click? I wish I could see the fuel weight in pounds. Am I missing it? Where is it? I don't think I'm missing it. So, 4188. I'm gonna have to do the math again. 4188 plus about 1400. Gonna give us 5600. 
I know, 1100. All right, so 42 plus 12. 54? Bring this up to 5400? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be way... We're gonna be way overweight. Max takeoff weight is 5000. Alright. Um, <laughs> we're gonna have to kick somebody out. This guy's gonna have to lose 100 pounds. Sorry, dude. It's gonna feel rough, but... There we go. <laughs> Let's hit load real time. All right, yeah, the passenger is, uh, ah, how convenient for us that the passenger is 102 pounds now. Plans it all along. Okay, so while it's loading, hopefully we have enough fuel. Yeah, I, I really wish it said the fuel, the fuel weight estimate. That would be very nice. Okay, then let's go to pre-flight. Sorry, over to flight plan. Re-import from Simbrief. There we go. Direct Raybeck Tango 290 to MEI, then to megahertz, and then to the airport, basically. All right, over to, we have so many things to set up here. All right, gonna have to do Volanta as well. So let me do, um, let me do Navigraph first. We're gonna unload our previous flight. Super Chat Mania, dude, David, thanks for the 199, man. Thank you very much, sir. You no, you demand. Thanks for the 199. <laughs> Enjoy the uh, the beautiful and much sought after face reveal. Um, let's import here, sim brief. All right, PBF. Oh, how, why did that open? So, maybe maybe I double click something. All right, I'm going to make some notes here. Just going to look at all the VORs on our route. So here's Montgomery. We're going to Ray, Raybeck or Rabic. Quain MEI, which is the Meridian VOR. So let's, I'm going to type that in. Meridian. Then we have Megahertz coming up right here. MHZ. Is that Madison? MHZ is... Magnolia Madison. Who knows which one they're going to use. Why does it have two names? It says Magnolia parenthesis Madison. This one said Meridian. Alright, so maybe they're going to call it Madison. And then we have PFB VOR, which is way up here. Or PBF, sorry. PBF Pine, Pine Bluff. Pine Bluff. Okay, I wrote that in my notes. Along with my route. I'm American 1342, slow to 180 knots, traffic ahead on approach. All right, <laughs> go take the test. I will, I will, until I can get through all the Shepard stuff, I wouldn't just go take it. Like, yeah, I, you know, your teaching talent's going to waste. But the thing is, I'm not going to become a real ground instructor. At least I don't have a plan to. So it's more just, if I did it, it would just be more for fun, really. For S and G's, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just not. I'm not super serious about it. I guess. Yeah, I heard Shepard is like the best. It's the way to go. All right, ground ops. The doors open. It says that the fuel's arriving. We'll see what the actual fuel is. Oh, you you've used it all the way. Nice. Wait, you're CFI, David? I think you've told me before. I forget. Are you a CF double I? We'll see if I get to the... Oh, you're not. Um, we'll see if I get to the point where I want a career change at this point in my life. It's, it's very unlikely, though. <laughs> All right, fuel truck's doing its thing. Oh, you're, you're getting ready to take the commercial check ride. Nice. So you have your instrument then? Where do you fly out of? Or what, what part of the world? You don't have to say the exact airport. Yeah, good luck on your commercial check ride. Then you're multi, okay. Let 
North Carolina. That's awesome, man. Good, yeah, good luck on your multi and your commercial. Did you see an RT? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's you're seeing you're seeing the Delta Tango providing some pre-flight entertainment. <laughs> yeah, that's the Juice Goose. It's done by uh, Parallel Forty Two. They're the same people that make Sky Park, but I would love to recommend Sky Park, but because it hasn't been updated in so long, it's it's still a decent route finder. It's just God, I wish I wish they maintained this and kept updating it. Because if I go back here, like um, if I zoom out. And um, can I just see all the other routes right now? Yeah, so there, there's just routes like worldwide. Um, and then they, they also have like tours. So like these gold colored ones. This is what was so cool is yeah, they were doing like these, these big tours like tour the Amazon part one, 13 stops. Um, they also have some like, is this the, oh, this is the Ben one, Ben Lamov pits delivery. So I guess I don't, I'm not familiar with Ben. I guess he's a huge aviation YouTuber, but I guess he did a cross country pits delivery like thing. I don't know. This is based on some real world thing that I don't know about, but you know, 15, 15 stops in a pits recreating some, what I think is a real world route somebody did. So that's why I really liked, um, sky park. And this is so easy to use compared to something like on air company or Neo flyer, any of the other ones. It's just, it's just a very nice. I mean, you can see it. It's <laughs> just very nice to use. Um, this little like tablet layout they have and it's like $30 one time, but they just stopped maintaining it. I mean, it still works just fine, but there's no new content. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good enough to find a quick route. It doesn't force you to take any specific plane or refuel or do any fleet management or weight and balance or fuel or any of that stuff. You just fly whatever plane you want. You just get from A to B. That's all you have to do. So it's nice for that. All right, fuel's being loaded up. And then pre-flight, everything is okay. All right, there's the fuel being added. All right, let me go to Volanta and get that set up. All right, that's set up. Pine Bluff. <laughs> Delta says it's utter, utterly juvenile of me. Always makes Kip laugh. Dude, I love that thing. Yeah, it's great. It's it's so fun to watch people drive around with those. I remember when we got them, we did... Or what was it when I got the helicopter? Whenever I do helicopter stuff or slower stuff, you guys drive those around. And I like try to get like helicopter shots. It's really fun. Not showing up on it on his screen makes it a downer. Yeah, I gotta I gotta switch my switch my app too often. Um uh, Kip, if you're near Torrance, go Oh, go to Sling and fly the Sling. Oh, what's the Sling 2? The newer version of the Sling, I guess. Was it the Sling S4? Is that what it was called? Is the Sling 2 a two-seater? No, the S4 is a two-seater, right? I think I would, I would definitely lean towards, um, I think I would lean towards like a Cirrus, like an SR20, I know it'd be more expensive or like a diamond, like a DA40 or something like that. Or maybe, maybe like a sling, but I think, I think I might lean towards like a diamond if I ever did and spring, spring for the diamond for, for learning how to fly. But I feel like everybody has to just start with the start with a classics like a piper or a, a cessna at least for a, a flight or two all right still fueling up this is basically the airliner experience we're getting right now in a ga plane just sitting here on the ground looking at the birds Passengers aren't even on their way yet. No passengers available? The passengers haven't showed up to the uh, FBO yet. Sling 2 is a two-seater. Oh, so much fun. Nice. Oh, you're doing yours in a DA-40. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, it's hard to say. Like, I'm, Everything I know is just based off the sim for the most part. 
I mean, I've been one of my girlfriends uh, flown and I've gone with her. Um, she's been in like Alpha Pipers and Sirius before. Alpha I haven't been in a Diamond Bravo yet though. I've been in Cessna's Pipers and Sirius. Have I flown the Piper Comanche in the sim? Yeah, yeah. The Piper Comanche is. If I wanted something um, a little slower that didn't go as high as the M500, I would be fine the Comanche. The Comanche is the best plane in the game, 100%. The best, the best plane. I think the M500 is this. The FSR 500 is like second best, on par with the, the Black Square planes. All right. Uh, okay. No, it says no passengers, so let's close the cabin door. I mean, FS Reborn, Black Square, and A2A are just the top of the top of the charts. All three of them. Like you can't you can't get better. You can you should just get all of the planes from all those developers. They're just incredible. I love all of them. Uh, oh wait, the passengers didn't get set. Oh well, whatever. That's fine. We're not gonna wait for it. We've been spending too much time here already. Um, all right, battery on. Fuel pumps to manual nav light on. And that's on. Okay. And we just hit start. Uh, I'm not on Vatsim, I'm just using Say Intentions. So you're, you're hearing either AI voices or other human voices that are on the same frequency. I'm on the tower frequency though, so we should only be hearing anyone on tower. I have the chatter turned off, which means we only hear a human voice if they're um, currently on the same frequency. All right, NG was 16, fuel condition to run. So quiet. Whoa, ITT. Went in the red for a second. Hopefully the engine's okay. All right, avionics, generator, alternator, fuel pumps to auto, ignition off. And before I forget this time, cabin comfort to normal, lead air on. Air conditioning on. Flaps to 10%, or sorry, 10 degrees. And rudder trim into the green right here. There we go, three's right in the middle. All right, back to Navigraph. 2675 for ATIS, 120. 675. And hold short instructions. VFR departures. What do we have last time? Hotel, I think. When's Beyond ATC coming out? Nobody knows yet. Montgomery Regional. Danley Field. Airport information Papa. Papa. 015 Tree Zulu. Wind 200 at 1 Tree. Visibility 10. Sky conditions. Broken at 2100 feet. Solid overcast at 2700 feet. Temperature 24. Dew point 21. Altimeter 2964. Visual approach is. Alright, 2964. Alright. Advise on course heading. That's good. Okay, clearance 118.3. One one eight point three, and then after that we'll want ground twenty one seven. That's in there, beautiful, right? Because we were just on with ground. Altimeter was two nine or six four. Updated there, and we'll see what they give us for runway and stuff. All right, let's get our clearance. <laughs> wow, <laughs> rude. Montgomery clearance, Piper 6063 Echo IFR to Pine Bluff, Papa Bravo Foxtrot. Uh, say Intentions does IFR as well. I'm using it right now, so you're hearing, you're hearing just Say Intentions tonight. Maybe someday I'll be able to show off uh, Beyond ATC. Yeah, IFR too. At the IFR, they're going through a little bit of a change because they just got a partnership with Navigraph for all of their navigation data. Piper so they're redoing a ton. Echo. Denley clearance cleared to Pine Bluff Airport radar vectors, Robex, then as filed. 
Climb and maintain 16,000. Departure on 124.0. Squawk 2511. Expect runway 21 for departure. Information, Papa, is current. All right, cleared a pine bluff vectors to Rabek. Climb and maintain 16,000. 124.0. Squawk 2511. We'll expect runway 21, and we have Papa. Piper 63 Echo. He sounds intense. Yeah, this guy has uh, got some attitude. <laughs> that was intense. $30 a month, yeah. Piper 63 Echo, read back correct. <laughs> read back correct. Um, they have they have a 24 hour they have a 24 hour trial for say intentions. Um, so if you want to if you want to try it, just pick a day where you're going to have a lot of time to fly in the sim and try it, you know, so you can get a good several flights in throughout the day to, to give it a shot. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's in a, it's in a beta technically still, but they released it so people can, you know, pay them to continue developing it. And they, you should see their discord. Like you can pop in their discord. It's on their website and you can just see the conversations happening every day. Brian is the main dev there and the guy is like literally working like 20 hours a day. It seems like he, he's incredible. He's, um, he's super responsive. Um, he's just great at what he does. And, uh, and the same goes for beyond ATC. Um, the main dev there, captain, that guy is also just like cranking on that software. Like it, it, you can go and look in their discord and see all the discussions. Um, yeah, they're both just kicking ass. It's great. It's a good time to be a simmer. All right, takeoff config. That should go away. We got we got the flaps and the rotor trim set. Let's get our squawk code going. He gave us 2511. 2511. We got 2964 set already. Let me go ahead and clear. Can I clear the minimums out? I don't know if I've ever done that. Maybe if I just change it to zero. There we go. All right. It's kind of cleared, maybe. All right, climb and maintain 16,000. All right, there's 16,000. We're gonna hit heading mode and flight level change mode for the autopilot. 16,000 will do, I think it's 140 is our preferred climb speed under 20,000 feet. We'll do 140 knots. And then on the heading, they said to expect runway 21. This will be a lot better for the winds. The runway heading is 214 right there. So we'll put in 214 on our heading indicator. Selected heading, 214. All right. And our route looks good going to the west. That's what we expect. And the first waypoint is Raybeck. They said vectors to Waybeck. Raybeck then has filed. And then 124.0 is going to be our departure. We'll put that in a minute. All right, so we got Montgomery. Uh, we got clearance. Ground is 121.7. We'll switch over there and then put in tower 19.7. All right, 19.7 is ready. What is it called here again? Delaney? I'm going to call it Montgomery. I'll just say ground. <laughs> Ground Piper 6 React uh, ready to taxi. We have information Papa. Ready for my IFR ticket. <laughs> Is that a good thing? Good kind of ticket? Piper 606 Tree Echo. Danily ground taxi to runway 21 via Echo Alpha hold short of runway 21. Runway 21 via Echo Alpha, hold short of Runway 21, Piper 63 Echo. All right, Runway 21 via Echo Alpha. So did they... Why is that printer icon up there? That's so weird. I mean, I guess people print stuff out. Uh, Echo Alpha. Echo 1 is over here. Echo is... This is Echo, right? Over here? And then Alpha is here. We're going to 2-1. I think we're just going via Echo, right? Runway 2-1 via Echo Alpha. Hawker I think, 511 Hotel I think it's just Alpha. like too Proceed short. To anyway, we're just going to turn to the left. Bravo. 
proceeding to holding point Charlie via Bravo Hawker 511 Hotel Alpha. Could go in here and set the runways as well. Runway 21 and then sim brief expected runway 36 at Pine Bluff, so we'll put that into 36 right here. Oops. Line below. 36. Alright, yeah, so two ones just right over here. Right to our left. Alright, taxi light is on. The rest of this is good. We're all already set up to take off. I think I loaded everything in Sky Park, right? Ready to go. Alright. Alright, parking brake is off. Pedo heat's off for now. MU2 makes me miss my old Mitsubishi. <laughs> Mine couldn't fly. Dude, I used to have a Mitsubishi forever ago. Like a two-door. What was the model? I forget the model. I had a Mitsubishi for a couple years. Used to be a motor motorcycle cop? No way. Dude, motorcycle cops have skills, man. I used to be pretty good at handling my bike when I had it. Alright, I had two of them. Oh no, the GPU card! Oh no! Oops. <laughs> uh, you know, it was it was right here staring me in the face the whole time too. Rip. Sorry, GPU cart. All right, that's all. Uh, that's all taken care of. Nobody saw anything. I wonder if the cart's like back there on its side. <laughs> Ten years on the bike. That's awesome. I'm sure you are insanely good at riding a motorcycle if you're a motorcycle cop. I did um, I did the CHP course here in California when I got my license. The MSF, Motorcycle Safety Foundation. Um, riding a 600cc sports bike in the DMV keyhole shape for a license was never going to happen when I was that, that new at riding. You got to like stand up. You got to like stand up and counter lean on that thing to do that DMV course. It's insane. So I did the, I did the CHP thing instead. <laughs> All right, let's switch over to tower and put our departure frequency in. Montgomery Tower, Piper 6 3 Echo, holding short runway 21. And what do we have here? 1240. 240. There we go. Let's get this set up. Auto, Piper auto. 6 3 Echo, Denali Tower, winds 199 at 16, runway 21, cleared for takeoff. Runway 21, clear for takeoff, Piper 6 3 Echo. All right, let's get our pedo heat on, landing light on, strobe light on, taxi lights off, manual on ignition and fuel pumps. We're good to go. Double check our trim is good. Rudder trim is good. Three and 10 on the flaps. Beautiful. All right, heading mode is set. Runway heading, flight level change, 140 knots. 16,000 in selected altitude. Ignition says on, fuel pumps say on on the cast messages. Beautiful. We're good to go. Uh, hopefully this is a better, a uh, little bit better of a wind situation. Winds are 200 at 13, so tiny bit of wind from the left. All right, 1300 on the torque, if I can get there, close to it. That's good. All right, waiting for 85. We need takeoff music. Pacific oh, that's not fun at all. 90 miles. knots. Following the 767 Pacific 1323. End of the runway. Positive rate. Gears up. This is not exciting takeoff music. Fail. Streamer fail. Should have been more exciting takeoff music. Alright, 120 knots. Flaps up. 300 AGL. Diamond Tree 71 Bravo Charlie, hold short of runway tree one, awaiting further Autopilot on. Holding Fuel pump to auto, three three ignition to three auto. Three Bravo Charlie. We'll wait for departure right now. Nav mode on standby. I'll zoom this map out. It's not very helpful. Hyper 63 Echo, contact departure. Over to departure, 63 Echo. 
All right, over to departure. Yeah, that is cruise music for sure. <laughs> departure, Piper 6063 Echo, 1700 climbing, 16000. Let's see what happens. Let's see if they turn us. They said vectors. Uh, vectors to Rabic. They could give us a direct Rabic, so let's get ready for that. Just Piper 6063 Echo Montgomery. Approach radar contact. Fly heading 267 vectors to Rabic, then own navigation. Keep it under 213 knots until reaching flight level 160. Fly heading 267, then own navigation, and we'll keep it under 7,000 knots. Piper 6 3 Echo. Uh, 267 on the heading. There we go. Let's see if they yell at us about the 7,000 knots. Oh, it's beautiful. In that soup. 17 degrees outside, so we don't need any anti ice right now. Flaps are up, gears up. Environmental controls were already set. Cabin PSI is going up. Yeah, sand intentions uh, generally sounds really good. So does um, so does Beyond ATC. All right, they said vectors. Yeah, look, they they gave me a, a really good heading here. Look at this heading. I mean, they got me going direct to the waypoint, and actually, with the wind, still, that's where we're actually our course is actually this little teeny tiny diamond. So we're actually very slightly headed um, towards the broken line. All right, five thousand feet. Yeah, they didn't yell at me for saying seven thousand, so that's nice. All right, we're just gonna turn our heading in a little bit more. And GPS is on standby here, so we'll intercept that leg. Oh, the breakout. Yes. This is where the chill music is okay. In the soup. Check those rudder skills. Yeah, I should put my rudder pedals back on. I'm horrible at, uh... I just... Uh, maintaining the center line is so hard. <laughs> Isn't it a recommendation? It's got to be easier in real life, right? I don't know. It seems it seems so difficult. What do you think, David? In your simming in Microsoft Flight Sim, does uh, do you think that in general it's easier to fly a real plane or fly a sim, fly a sim plane, especially landing and taking off? Do you think it's easier in real life? I don't know, it seems insanely hard in the sim to me to, to keep a center line, taking off and landing. Real life is much better, Rory says. <laughs> Get some TPR pedals. Dude, aren't those like $600? <laughs> real plane is easier. Center line's a suggestion like roads. Yeah, or the speed limit, true. <laughs> American 1342, slow to 180 knots, traffic ahead on approach. I, I wonder whether, I wish they weren't giving American me speed restrictions in a turboprop. Seems a little weird. I think, I think it's probably in there because I'm flying IFR and it's just used to giving speed restrictions. But we're not going to be more than 150 or 60 knots in this on our departure at the most. I'll write a debug for that um, and just write the note. Debug... IFR uh, departure giving speed restrictions for small planes like the M500. Seems unnecessary. All right, I just debugged that. Debug log. I like how they do the, the bug reports with say intentions. All, you can say it. All you have to do is say the word debug at the beginning of what it, what you transmit and then just say whatever it is and it will send that as a bug report and tie it to your flight and everything so they can see the whole transcript and see what happened and all that um 
or you can just type it like if you don't if you don't want to talk you don't have to you can just type all your stuff into the little text box they have and and say intentions but it's i think it's pretty clever how they get the debug and the bug the bug reports all right coming up on ten thousand feet get the landing light off strobes are on navs are on these are in auto pedo install heat on stall heat's inhibited still because it's too warm Just leave it on. Going up to 16,000, so we're not going to need standard. Barrel pressure. This is like a three hour flight, though. I wonder if they're going to bring us higher than 16,000. Uh, this sim's great for IFR. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, my girlfriend was, was starting her instrument training a while back. She, like, hasn't uh hasn't done it for a while but i have like the g1000 in the closet like ready to go if she does it again uh water cool says i'm just trying to stay busy oh that's that uh, you sold the house dude water you're making me sad man i'm sorry dude Well, we are around, and if you need to chat, you know, we're all on Discord. Sorry about that, man. Oh, David says, I wish they make IFR a bit more user-friendly. Oh, and VR, yeah. There's not even, like, a notepad app, is there? It would be cool to have, like, a little toolbar notepad app. Like, um, there's one here. There's, like, this one as part of Flow. So you can, like, click here. Or you, you type the note up here, sorry. It's a little weird though, but you can type the notes up here. Like, um, put in your clearance and stuff. What, I would have put like vectors as file. You can just type the notes in. Squawk 2511, runway 21, whatever. And each, oh, I got rid of it. Oh, you have to click. See, look, you even, even that, like that, that's crap. <laughs> I hit enter and it got rid of it. So you have to type in the note and then, oh no, it says hit return. Oh, now it worked. What? Okay. And then you click the note to get rid of it. So you just get a list, a list of stickies. Um, but. United 229, turn left, heading 220 vectors for sequence. 220. 220, United 229. Uh, let's turn on the multiplayer chatter. I had turned it off before. Because some of you guys were flying around. I wanted to make sure I heard you. So I'll turn on multiplayer chatter. AI chatter was already on. Like that Delta one you just heard was AI generated. But now that I turned on multiplayer. Oh, I haven't been paying attention to my rudder trim. Here we go. Whoops, I hit. Wait, autopilot came off. Let me turn that back on. No autopilot. That's not a thing. It's like I need a little left side rudder trim in. At least until we get to our cruise. Um, yeah, now that I have multiplayer chatter turned on too, we'll, we'll hear other pilots Hyper talking no matter where they are. Center on uh, here we go again. What do you say, uh, Aniston Center? 122.4, Piper 63 Echo. Let me check the name of what they said. Yeah, it is Aniston Center. Which also doesn't exist, right? Wait, I don't get it. They had what was the other one they had? There's no such thing as Aniston Center. And there's no such thing as what was the other one? Water or something, or I forget what it's called. Green or green something. Center Piper 6063 Echo. One five thousand three hundred climbing sixteen thousand. Whoops, should have said one six thousand. Sixteen. I wonder if they'll make like some uh Piper six zero six three echo Aniston Center Roger. Aniston Center, what? Is this part was this part of the April Fool stuff? They renamed a bunch of centers? Dude, these these clouds look like cliffs. It looks like Avatar or something. Don't these look like cliffs? Like right here, here. 
It's like the Grand Canyon of clouds right here. Looks awesome. What's going on? It's beautiful. Oh, Greenfield. Gotta get my screenshots while I can. Oh, it's looking awesome. That's a good one. Yeah, the clouds are looking pretty epic right now. And yeah, maybe I, I had some weird, um, <laughs> last night I was flying, not on stream, I was just flying a, I think I was flying this plane and, um, I was flying along and, so, and there was a report of a, there was a pilot that checked in. It said like Janet air one, two, three, uh, proceeding with chemtrail ops or something like that. It said like approved. <laughs> it was like, there's, there's some like April fool stuff they put in, I think. And uh, like talking to, with the AI saying that they're commencing chemtrail operations. <laughs> it's pretty funny. The <laughs> cloud sandwich pog. <laughs> what's up? What's up, Nor? Um, if you go to the airport info comms, tower ground and navigraph, it'll tell you what to call them. Yeah, yeah, it will. But the problem is that there's no there's no center called this. Like the center we're in should be like Memphis or something right now. I can just look at the borders. We're in Atlanta or Memphis? Atlanta. So we should be in Ad uh, with with Atlanta center right now. Like there's only so many centers, uh, and there's there's no center called the Addison Center. But um, I I don't know. Maybe it was part of a maybe it was part of a uh, an April Fool's thing or something. But yeah, you're right. You can go you can go to the uh, to the charts to see what the center will be like. Here it's Atlanta center. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. <laughs> It must have been an April Fool's thing. Oh, too busy to fly yourself? I'm sure you'll find time in the near future, especially next week when the Dukes comes out. That's the time to fly if you can carve out time. I need to watch uh, more videos on the Dukes. I don't know if I'll be able to be prepared for the stream. Yeah, no meows today. I think we could turn it to guard. What is, it, what is the guard frequency? Um, guard is 121.5. So if we turn on 1215, I think we'll hear the meows on guard. I guess it's good practice to monitor guard anyway. But yeah, let's see if we hear some map meows on guard. On guard, it sounds like we're about to duel. Oh, you were 20 minutes behind live. Oh. <laughs> oh, when I was on the ground. Oh, okay, Jewel. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, if you like accidentally click off or something. Oh, we're getting some icing here. Yes. Right, let's get the windshield de-icing on at the least. Chancellor 707, Tango Charlie, Los Angeles. Windshield Center. heat Roger. on. I guess we'll do prop. Let's see, is there anything on the surfaces? We can see anything on the boots. Uh nothing on the boots. Just the windshield. It's a temperature now, negative six. Alright, let's go prop and windshield. So many de-ice uh, options in this. We have surface de-ice. So we'll get the boots. Um, they're all over the place. We have the leading edge here. The horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer. Here have boots on them as well. Like all these black boots you see turn on and they actually animate. Break the ice off. I don't, I don't know if you actually see the ice break off or not. I haven't accumulated. I don't think I've accumulated enough. But if we turn it on up here, up here, we'll see it go on like a, I think it's like a 30 or 60 second timer. So they'll inflate. Do it, inflate. Delta 401, clear direct to Delta Alpha November VOR. Clear direct to Delta Alpha It's gonna be Alpha bumpy, November yes. VOR, Delta That's what we want. Impossible landings, you know. Maybe we'll have another go around. Or uh, what should have been a go around. Come on, boots. Activate. It's probably doing the other ones first in the cycle. Actually, maybe they only turn on when they detect ice. I thought they just turn on right away. Yeah, this one's not on. Maybe they only go on when there's actually ice detected. I could have sworn it was just a simple timer. Well, apparently I'm lying. I have it on, right? Surface de-ice. Yeah. 
Surface de-ice. Should be doing it. Yeah, maybe they maybe it changed so it only goes on when you actually have ice. All right, well, for another time, I guess. We were picking up some. Oh, we got double rainbow. Ooh. Oh, that's like a full on rainbow. Bravo, it's a full circle. To climb 0, on what? Navigation. Climbing to 10,000, resuming on navigation. Mooney, oh my God, it's Bravo, a sign. I I don't think I've ever seen a full circle rainbow like that. What is going on? Am I tripping? What is happening? <laughs> yeah, all the way across. You're not the only. Oh, are you seeing that too? Whoa, it's double on that side. Amazing. <laughs> it's following you. Yeah, why is it moving? I think I lost multiplayer. I only see sauce. Saucy's bat in a tomcat. Everyone else has disappeared. Flight sim uh, multiplayer strikes again. Oh, you lost everybody but me. I guess we got our own server. <laughs> Unicorns, unicorn emotes. They're beautiful. Man, this looks great too. More screenshots. Circle rainbows are a real thing in aviation. That's awesome. I had no idea. Very cool. Yeah, the clouds look epic today. There's just, I mean, there's like this uh, crazy storms going on the east coast and the midwest right now, right? Or this is southeast, I guess it looks like. Let me look at, uh, I'm gonna bring up Sky Vector again. Oh yeah, it's like, oh. Dude, it's like everywhere. Yeah, it's the storms. This is just on Sky Vector's weather radar. Yikes. Stay safe out there. Snow upon snow in southern Wisconsin. Stay warm, boys. Get those sims going. Sim, coffee, tea, hotty toddy, however you do it. So this is why you have to upgrade from the gaming stool. So in these moments, you're more comfortable. Gotta get you gotta get to that gaming chair. That's an upsell right there. <laughs> That's what marketers call an upsell. <laughs> Alright, let's see how we're doing. We haven't heard from them for a bit. This is like a three hour flight. I think I should run a 2x for a bit, because we'll be here all night. Cheese curds. <laughs> Yeah, hotty toddy's a, a cocktail, yeah. Hot water, whiskey, honey, lemon. I, I just missed what they said. Say again for 6-3 Echo. Sorry, we're staring at the beautiful clouds up here and talking about hot toddies. Okay, they have us changing over to some other fictitious center. Hyper 6-3 Echo, Aniston Center, contact Atlanta Center on one tree, 2.25. 3225 Piper 63 Echo. 3225. Whoops, wrong, uh, wrong, wrong radio there. We haven't heard any meows. Oh, I have to. Oh no, I am monitoring COM2. Yeah, no meows on COM2 right now. All right, here's Atlanta Center. Give it 10 seconds. Do I play Flight Simulator for a job? No, no, <laughs> no way. <laughs> If I could, if I could play this for a job, that would be amazing. But no, <laughs> that is a pipe dream. 
That's a one in a billion chance there. I don't. I also don't put up enough effort to making enough videos to to do that. But no, I got. I have a career. I don't know if anybody plays Flight Simulator for a job. That would be kind of terrifying. Streaming as a or making content as a actual full time job would be terrifying, in my opinion. Atlanta Center Piper six oh six three Echo one six thousand feet. Mrs. Tango from behind me. Who's getting cheese curds? <laughs> She's from Wisconsin. Can you tell? <laughs> well, at least we got Atlanta Center this time. Got a real, got a real center. Piper six zero six three Echo Atlanta Center. Roger. I said six oh six. I shouldn't say that. Shouldn't say the O part. All right, they just said Roger. I think it's time for two X speed. Let's do it. I can't see you guys anyway. I don't feel as bad about about accelerating. There is nobody in the sky. Just the two of us. Actually, I think I even lost um Oh, there's Saucy. Uh, technically, all rainbows are circles. Oh, I didn't know that either. We only see the top half because the ground blocks the other half from your view because it's not reflective. Yeah, Aniston Center, yeah. Flight service station at Montgomery was Aniston. Oh, I see. Interesting. It, it's got to be the data. They're they're doing all this Navigraph data importing. What, what did they say? I think it's all... Is it all frequencies, airspace... I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up on their Discord right now. Let me see when they made the announcement. Uh, oh yeah, right here. So this was on the 27th of March, and that wasn't even a week ago, was it? All frequency data is now coming from Navigraph. They said this includes airport frequencies, radar, approach, departure center, etc will be slowly moving other ATC data over throughout the next few days. So that's probably why it's getting confused. Is they're like migrating to use all the Navigraph data. Um, it says, if you are not a Navigraph customer and you do not link your account, ATC will use Navigraph data that is one year old, which is an upgrade from what they had before. If you are a Navigraph customer and you link your account, ATC will use the most recent Navigraph data, huge upgrade. Oh, I, I don't think I've linked my account. Maybe that's why... I mean, it should still be pretty good with the year-old Navigraph data. Oh, link Navigraph. Oh, yeah, okay. ATC data set on their website says standard, one-year-old. Link Navigraph account for premium. I'm going to do that right now. I should have did that. FMS data API. Okay. Linked. Nice. It says Navigraph linked. And it says right now the only data being used for Navigraph is for frequencies. More data will be added over the next few days. Okay. So I have like a little notice. Cool. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't do that before. So I was not using the newest Navigraph data. So maybe that, uh, oh, maybe that was messing with it a little bit. I wonder if that means that when we're at airports, like bigger airports that have different, say two different tower frequencies or two different ground frequencies, I wonder if that means they're going to distinguish between the two. Or I wonder if it's still just gonna pick one of them to use for the whole airport. I mean, theoretically, if enough people are using, say, intentions at enough major airports, they will eventually probably wanna use multiple frequencies just to split the traffic up instead of having like, you know, 20 people trying to get their clearance at the same time. I mean, that would be a nice problem to have, right? Enough, that many people using their product. All right, we're at 2x speed now, so. I'm gonna go ahead and pull us to 11.50 on the torque, roughly. There we go. We're in the yellow, air is not, I mean, it's pretty smooth, I guess. Wait, I pulled it down. Why are we getting airspeed warning? Airspeed, airspeed. 
All right, there we go. 1060 on the torque. We're in that yellow. Saw 59 knot headwind, 185 ground speed. And we're at 2x speed still. I need to remember that. Mayday, mayday. Oh, no. We bet that song. I mean, doing a mayday call from 16,000, what, what would we even do? <laughs> I don't even know. Reason there's circles because the, the prism light takes the shape of the sun. Oh. I didn't know. I, I didn't realize how little I knew about rainbows. Can anyone see behind me? Oh, see you behind me? Yeah, I only see Saucy still. He's getting closer and closer in his Tomcat. Or her Tomcat. Their Tomcat. Taxi instruction field non-existent. They were actually the last few times I did taxi with the IFR with, um, with, with say, intentions. It was good. Um, I did When I did the Phoenix flights last week, did I do one or two Phoenix flights? I think I might have done two in the ta or maybe it was just one and then it was the taxi on both ends. Um, they, it didn't do a good job with like the holding short part. It didn't like know when I was holding short. I had to kind of nudge it, but it gave me accurate taxiway, um, taxiway letters, which was surprising. You'll always be close. That Tom, Tomcat Escort's coming in. Coming in hot. Oh, see you, Delta. Good to see you, man. Thanks for the thanks for the Juice Goose entertainment, dude. And the six months. Appreciate you, dude. Oh, yeah. I saw you use air, air hauler, too. I haven't tried it for a long time. I remember being, like, very, very into on air company when I was giving air air hauler a try and it just didn't it didn't make a good first impression for whatever reason and I just stopped using it there are just so many options though between air hauler and I mean I'm using sky park tonight even though it's kind of outdated in a way I was having I was having a hard time finding the freelance routes in um, on air company for this plane specifically they just need to... Maybe I should just report it to them. Um, like, it was only base, It was only giving me two options for a one-leg freelance route. And the two options were, like, 700 miles or 40 miles and nothing in between. So I was like, oh, <laughs> I only have two routes to pick from, which is a, a little annoying. And it had put in all of these, like... Um, I guess I should fix my slip skid here with some rudder trim. Um, it had put in, like, a sightseeing ones and medical rescue and stuff like that and I was just looking for passengers and cargo. Piper 606 Tree Echo Atlanta Center. Contact Memphis Center on 128.275. 128.275 Piper 63 Echo. All right, over to Memphis Center. Memphis Center, Piper 6063 Echo, 16,000 feet. They got us just on top of the clouds, which I mean, I kind of appreciate. Piper 6063 Echo, Memphis Center, Roger. That sounds like the same voice, right? That slip skid is just very far to the left still. Our fuel is balanced. This is kind of a scary amount of rudder trim to put in. We're at four, negative 4.5, negative five now. And that rudder trim tab. Needs even more. Let's do six. All right, now it's uh, a little better. This feels like so much trim. 31 knot crosswind. There we go. All right. Negative 6.4 on the rudder trim. There it is. You can just see the difference <laughs> right there on the rudder trim tab. It's cool.
All right, Ben. Have a good night, man. Thanks so much for the super chat earlier. Really appreciate it. Have a good night, dude. All right, how are we looking here? All right, top of descent's not even calculated yet. Do I dare go to Forex? <laughs> Andy's gonna take a bath. Nice. Moonraker five, November Golf Polaris control, Roger. Dude, a bath sounds awesome. I don't even have a bathtub. <laughs> I only have a shower. I move. I used to have a tub, but I almost never used it. But now I, we just have a shower. Just a stand-up shower. It's fine. I like very, very rarely took a bath anyway. Southwest eight eight seven. All right, I think I'm gonna go up to four X. Oh no, you just got. Sorry about that. You just got up to me, and I was gonna switch to four X. <laughs> so rude you like this shower more dude a dude a, a bath is awesome should be like a once a month thing that would be nice bath is just relaxing man all right let's go to 4x speed because i don't want this to take all night long showers are superior less water usage that's for sure we're gonna fly into the clouds yes Oh. All right, we're at 4x speed now. Let's see if we pick up a little icing. So do I still have the? I still have the windshield icing. Let me turn it off. We windshield heater. Let's see if we pick up any icing. All right, 4x speed activated. And then, let's see, I had, I'm just gonna put in the visual approach just to get a top of descent. And then we'll replace that later. And let's see. Is Simbrief thought we'd do runway 36. Actually, I'll just put in the LPV. Um, let's see, is this from, this looks like it's from the Southeast. That looks like where we are. Yep, this one looks right. We'll do, Jupda. And then we'll just load it. Okay, over an hour until top of descent. Alright, we gotta get rid of the airport and the on route waypoint section though. This one. I'm not gonna overfly the airport and then turn around, so clear this one. Alright, hour and eight minutes for top of descent. That is why we need the acceleration today. Sounds fantastic, Andy. <laughs> that sounds like something I would do. A snack, a bath, watching YouTube or Twitch. That's the life. All right, here we are on Navigraph. I got the world map on. Just wondering why it looked a little weird. Let's do auto IFR. All right, there we go. All right, let me go to flight and then set our approach. We're just gonna assume we'll get the RNAV for 3-6. And I chose Jupta. For the transition. Oh, and that's part of our flight plan already, isn't it? Yeah, we have Jupta and Etel and then PBF. So probably want to clean those up. We probably want to go GLH to Jupta. So yeah, let's get rid of these. I mean, the ATC is going to expect us to go to those, but I'm going to get rid of them. There we go. It got rid of the duplicate. And then we'll just... There we go. Now it's 43 minutes. And we'll just request that approach from them. No, we did file with those waypoints in. <laughs> this makes more sense, though. All right. Top of descent's way out here past GLH. 
Um, GLH, did I write that one down? No, I don't know what GLH is. Alright, GLH is Greenville. I'm gonna write that one down. GLH Greenville, just in case they call out that VOR. So I guess we had we had those waypoints in there because of our route taking the Victor 74. Sabaneta Airport at 8,100 feet. San Martin QNH 1010. Wait, why isn't it showing? Um, there we go. Looks like I messed with the settings at one point. So yeah, here on the Victor 74, we're getting all these waypoints for free because of the airway. So. Jumped uh, and then ETEL and then PBF VOR, the Pine Bluff VOR. Those are all on that airway, but we're going to break off from that airway for an approach at some point. So that's why we had the, that's why I didn't have those noted in the notes is because they're, they're just on, waypoints that happen to be on the Victor airway. All right, so we have Fannin. No, no yig, no yig. Megahertz, which is Magnolia, or Madison. Three three echo, contact Memphis Center on one three two point five. One three two point five, Piper six three echo. All right, thirty two five. Memphis Center, Piper six zero six three echo, one six thousand feet. All right, 34 minutes. Let's slow it down a little bit. We'll go back to 2x. All right, 2x, 34 minutes, top of descent. So hopefully in like 10 minutes or so, we'll hear from them. Get a uh, get an approach. Let's check the latest METAR. Windsor 290 at 14, gusting at 27. Two nine zero, and then we have runways three six and one eight. So we'll have a little bit. Well, I mean, we're gonna have a crosswind. Two nine zero, so six. That's like what 70, 60, 70 degrees difference. Oh, <laughs> and one eight is gonna be the same. It's gonna be like a hundred degree difference, hundred ten degree difference. So. We're getting a almost a full crosswind again. <laughs> it's it's going to be great. <laughs> Very excited. Delta four zero oh, I see you guys. Direct to Delta Alpha November VOR. Oh, and you're gone again. You were back and now you're Delta gone. Delta Alpha November VOR Delta four zero one. <laughs> Water cooled. What are you doing with that plane? Look at this. Uh, the way of the couch captain. Uh, this is how we do uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it never gets old. <laughs> FX is the same way. <laughs> Moon Rank of 5, November Golf Climb and Maintain. <laughs> Anything that's zero. glitching out just always, <laughs> always looks funny. I'm a child, okay? Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing on your screen. It's beautiful. Aviation technology at its finest. Just let the plane fly itself, you know? <laughs> we need 108, 128 tick servers like Counter-Strike, okay? We need everybody at 2 milliseconds ping. 128 tick servers, nothing less. We demanded a Sobo. Delta 564, climb and maintain flight level 370. This is just unacceptable. I switched liveries. I was using that mint green one for a while and realized I didn't like it as much as the other one, so I've switched. Oh, the dog's not in. Oh, yeah, I did no passengers. Right, I guess we could get back there and serve ourselves. Ah, here we go. This thing will fly itself. The G1000 is, you know... 
It's so good. We don't even have to worry about it. One time in my life, I got to fly in a private jet. I know you could just charter them as an adult. You know, save up with a bunch of friends. Charter charter a jet. It's it's attainable. It's po or it's possible. But uh, yeah, I got to take one one time, and I sat backwards like this. It was awesome. The pillars are pretty messed up already. Whoops, really messed up. Warp drive engaged. I need to set a, uh, let's see, do I have any customs? Custom, no I don't. All right, that's gonna be control one, or alt one right back here. Maybe zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Alt-1. Get back there whenever it's time. This is what everybody's going to do when every single car is self-driving anyway. Alright, let's check our top of descent. 18 minutes. Alright, back to real time. And then we can just be chilling here. We like answer. We answer the ATC call. And then bam. Right back to sipping our coffee. That's what it's going to be like. But in a car. Let me fix this camera a little bit. It's weird how when you do a camera, like with the alt key, if you set one of the alt one through nines, you have to like zoom in further than normal to get it to snap to the right spot. It's, it's zoomed, it saves it zoomed out like two Three, notches two, Alpha November, Gulf, out Melbourne Center, from where you save it. It's a little weird. Back to normal time, yep. Flying away into the void, yeah. <laughs> Hey, we're out of all the clouds. Oh my god, you're so close. Oh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to change it so I can see your plane. Sorry, you're gonna disappear and you're gonna be in front of me again. Sorry, I'm messing up your perfect alignment. Alright, now if you're close again, I'll see you. Who was that? Couldn't even tell who it was or you were too close. Oh, it's Versa. Alright, there we go. Level you have this thing on your wish list for ages. Oh, the uh, the FSR 500 deuce. Rawl, are you there? Can we do giveaways? Rawl, Rawl, are you in the chat? <laughs> the dev from um, FS Reborn uh, has been in the chat before. Yeah, it's great. Well, Deuce, you're going to have a, an even harder decision come next week when the Duke Piston and the Duke Turbines come out. Two new black square planes, the Dukes, are coming out next week sometime. They look incredible. And there's no G1000 in them, so if, if you want to fly something... Uh, I think it'll be at least as good as this plane. Actually... It might not be as good as this if it doesn't have wear and tear. At least for me. Like, I I want the wear and tear in the plane. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, the, the Dukes are uh, looking really good. If you go to YouTube and look at... They're on the Just Flight channel, I think. But just look up on YouTube. Look up Black Square Dukes, plural. Because they're um, releasing two different variations. One's a piston engine and one's a, a turboprop turbine engine so um, they look really really good no g1000 they have uh the 530 the 430 the 750 or the 650 so they'll work with both the tds and the pms 50 versions of the gtn 750 if you have that you can get the free pms version if you don't have one uh, or you can use the gns 530 and gns 430 but it's like an analog. It's it's pretty much like the panel of the other black square planes where they're analog style. Kind of like the 850. Yeah, they look uh they look really cool. I just want wear and tear and everything now. Like the Comanche has wear and tear and a walk around. This plane has wear and tear in it, so like you have to refill the tire pressure and stuff. It doesn't have, like, the walk-around part of it, but I love that you go into maintenance, and it has... How many spots are there? 11? I think there's actually more than 11, because, like, when you go into some of these, 
Um, you're actually like changing the tires and the tire pressure. So there's more than like one setting in some of these. Uh, but you have wear and tear for like all the different components, the lights, the battery, um, the wear and tear on the tires, the tire pressure. Uh, you know, you can break the engine, all that kind of stuff. So um, all this stuff. Yeah, I, I just like, I, I love the persistent wear and tear stuff. So I'm not sure that the, like the other black square planes, I don't think have that as far as like tires and stuff. They do it with the engine. Um, the engine wear and tear and failure rate over time, but uh, like engine damage. But I just, yeah, I feel like the Comanche in, in this might have spoiled, spoiled me and us a bit. It just adds that extra little tiny bit of realism into it that I like. It makes you feel like you own the plane, you know, when you have that persistence. And it's not just like the engine. Our, uh, our rudder trim was... Oh, whoops, I got the autopilot off again. I think I'm uh, somehow accidentally... I think it's when I'm changing the rudder trim too much, it's disconnecting the autopilot, so I have to do it more slowly. Sixty nine knot, nice crosswind from Five the left. Three echo contact Memphis Center on one two seven point four two five. One two seven point four two five Piper six three echo. Just doing my rudder trim still. I think I'm just gonna reset it to zero. That's yeah, pretty good. Just a little bit to the right. Memphis Center Piper 6063 Echo 16000 feet Piper 6063 Echo Memphis Center Roger Roger <laughs> This is awesome Got a, We got two jets escorting me Thanks for the uh, double jet escort, boys. Boys and girls. Imagine the wear and tear you put on the GP. <laughs> I wish it like tipped over when you accidentally left it connected. <laughs> it's just, like, it's there tipped over with a guy like face palming next to it. <laughs> like, oh my God. You get a write up, a little message comes through the EFB. All right, let's check our top of descent. 12 minutes. And we're expecting the RNAV for runway 36. The winds suck though. Let me see, are there only, is there only the, yeah, there's only the one runway, 1836. Bummer. All right, we'll bring this approach plate up. But uh, they haven't assigned us an approach yet. Looks like we'll be with Little Rock Approach at some point. Pine Bluff, Arkansas. <laughs> A nice livery on the Tomcat. <laughs> Oh, I got an alert on my phone. There is no tsunami risk for the West Coast because of the uh, earthquake in Taiwan. That's good. Delta 564, Fort Worth Center, contact the Ritter Center on 122.3. <laughs> look, at, look at the difference between our heading and our course right now. It's, this wind is intense. We've had, we've had fun winds and clouds like all day. I mean, we got some break from the clouds right now. Oh yeah, I didn't check the METAR to see what the clouds what, uh, what the cloud coverage was like. Um, okay, it's clear. All right, nice. It's clear, but the winds are 14 gusting 27. 
two nine and look at the runways. The winds are two nine zero, fourteen, gusting twenty seven knots, and the two runways we have are perpendicular to that. So three six gives us a what is that? Uh, seventy knot or seventy degree difference. So I mean, either way, we're gonna have mostly a crosswind on either runway. I guess one. No, no, uh, three six would be slightly better than than one eight. Uh, it's gonna be another horrible landing. Very excited. <laughs> Water cooled is almost caught up. Hey, jets only up here, okay? Jets only. <laughs> Let's forget that the vision jet is uh, as fast as a TBM. It's called a jet. It's a jet, okay? <laughs> Don't tell him he's not a jet. Oh, you got your Toby today, Deuce. Nice. What do you think? I once again have disconnected mine. I'm just I'm just so back and forth on everything. I'm like, ah, the Toby's on, the Toby's off. I'm gonna use a headset today, I'm gonna use a microphone today. I'm gonna fly the Piper today. I'm gonna fly the Airbus today. Uh, Sean says I'm a terrible sim pilot. I can't read METARs. I I don't know all of it, Sean. But it's not it's not actually difficult to read for the most part. Like it, um, this part, the first part is just the station, like where where the measurements coming from. So in our case, it's our destination airport not a nearby airport that's got the, the report. And then this this thing is just the Zulu time of when the report was made. Um, is that the day? I think the first two digits is the day, right? The third, is this the third of April? I th is it the weekday? What's the, well, actually, now I'm not sure I know. What are the first two numbers? And then it's the hour and the minute. I thought it was the day. Is it the weekday? Is that, is that it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Anyway, and then it's the wind. Like this wind looks crazier than it normally does because it's, when you see knots, KT, you know that section is the wind. So it's 290 knots, gusting 14, or sorry, it's 290, the magnetic direction the wind's coming from, 14 knots, gusting 27 knots. Normally it'll just say like 290, 14 Alpha knots. Contact, and then Center SM is statute miles, so this is the visibility. Clear is clear. Clear clouds, no clouds. If there were clouds, it would say something like this. Scattered at 040, that's uh, 4,000 feet. Broken at 25,000 feet. But it's it's not horrible. I think I would just get started by just picking out the most important information, which is going to be the altimeter setting right here after the A is the altimeter setting. 2980. And then um, the winds are, uh, you know, second most important, I would say. And then probably the clouds and visibility third. Just because if you're flying with the autopilot and using, you know, like approaches that are going to bring you down to the runway, like most of the time it's not, most of the time you're going to see the runway before you land, even if it's like low IFR conditions. But it's learnable. I, ju I think I just started by looking at one or two pieces of information. Um, like these other ones at the end, I don't even know. I don't know anything after the altimeter setting. Like these remarks, all these remarks codes, I have no idea how to read them. I'd have to look all those up. And you can always like just tune in um, to the frequency and have it read to you. Alpha November Gulf Melbourne Center, Roger. Yeah, I would just start by just looking at the altimeter. Like, just look at the altimeter setting. And you can, you don't need the EFB to get the METARs. You can do it on the G1000 as well. All you have to do is turn on the cursor. And then you have to scroll to where it says destination down here. Delta and you'll see down here, it gives you the METAR right runway, here in text. It's the same port. format, but it's a way to get it in, in a plane that doesn't Descent have like an EFB like this one does. Feet. Or you can pull it up to where it says origin. So as long as you have those set, the airport set, it'll give you the METAR automatically right here. Uh, and then there's the final way is to go up to the weather window. 
So if you're using live weather, you can just hit METAR here. And they'll give you a list of airports. Um, I think it goes... Oh, it shows Bravo, Montgomery. Bravo, Delta, Washington Center. I don't know that it shows automatically show. Oh, yeah, it does. It looks like it shows, yeah, your origin and destination first and second. So you can just click here. Oh, no meets are available. Huh. That's weird. We have the METAR right here. I wonder why it's not available there. No meets are available anywhere. Well, you normally have to pick one that start like a bigger airport that'll have one. Yeah, I wonder why that's not working. Huh. Maybe we found a bug. Yeah, we're not getting it for Montgomery either. Oh, well, never mind. Don't do that. Just use the G1000, I guess. You could also look one up with a real world tool. Like just type in METAR and then the airport code and look at the real world METAR. Uh, Emmett says, in Neofly, can you use any plane for the Bush pilot starting aircraft? No, I think you have to, don't you have to pick? I think it lets you pick between a couple planes, like the 152, the 172, and the Cub, maybe? It's been a while since I've used Neofly, but I think it had you pick. Piper 606 Tree, Echo Memphis Center. Expect the RNAV runway 36 approach into Pine Bluff. All right, we'll expect the RNAV runway 36 into Pine Bluff. Thanks, Piper 606 Tree, Echo. All right, we're already set up for the RNAV 36, so that's good. And when they call it out, we're top of descent in three minutes, so hopefully they give us more info soon. If they call it out, we're looking for Jupta as our initial approach fix. If we look over here, the other initial approach fixes are ZAM2, which is to the west, which is unlikely. Um, then we have Jupta over here on the right side of the map of the uh, chart, off the screen basically. And then here there's Reroy. It's possible they give us Reroy, but more than likely, hopefully they give us Jupta. Um, and then let's go ahead and put in the minimums for that. All right, LPV. What is the difference between these two? Uh, local altimeter setting versus the Stuttgart altimeter. So we have local. So we'll put in the first, this first section here, 452 on the barrow minimums. Let's go set that timer ref, 452. So we'll do 460. Holding shift while I use my mouse wheel to make it way faster. All right, 460. Close it. That is all set. And we already had it programmed in the G1000 from before. Good to go. <laughs> oh, FX. Oh, FX is right there catching up still. I feel bad. Water cool. Did you back off? Because I said uh, only jets allowed as escorts. <laughs> He's like slightly to our left. Oh, he's coming in. Are we on slightly different routes? Or maybe the wind is just, uh, the wind must be like just affecting our planes differently, right? I guess that makes sense. They're both trying to stay on the route as best they can. What's my, cur my current leg here is GLH to Jupta. So we're going direct Jupta, but he didn't tell us Hyper to. Six tree echo. Oh. Contact Memphis Center on 133.075. 133075. 133075, Piper 63 Echo. There we go. Oh, you activated your approach. Oh, got it, got it. Memphis Center, Piper 6063 Echo, 16,000 feet. I said 606 again. I need to stop. 606 is kind of hard to say. Six zero. Roger. All right, bottom altitude. So the FAF is 1800. I'm just going to set that up for now. We'll see what they give us. 1800. VNAV needs to start our descent in one minute. I'll just say we're ready, ready for our descent. We're ready for our descent for the RNAV runway 36, Piper 6 Re Echo. Uh, this is the best place to... Oh, the food's gone. What? 
Oh, where did the food go? Piper 6 Tree Echo, descend via the RNAV approach to runway. Tree 6, descend and maintain 2000 until established on the final approach course. Cleared RNAV runway Tree 6 approach at Pine Bluff Airport. All right, cleared for the RNAV at 3-6 approach. We'll descend and maintain 2000 until, until established. Piper 6-3 Echo. Nice. All right, VNAV. Oh, that was like perfect timing. Look at that. Top of descent <laughs> in two seconds. All right, let's pull our torque back to about 500. This thing overspeeds so fast. And, uh... It takes a while to bleed that speed off if you don't catch it right away, so I'm, I'm getting used to pulling the torque back a little to a specific spot. <laughs> Seems like 500 on, on the torque is usually pretty good. I'm at 5 of 12. Alright, starting our descent. Bottom of descent's in 12 minutes. We already got it all programmed in. We got the minimum set. Let's see, destination... Elevation is 201, and here it says touchdown zone elevation 202, right there. Or airport elevation is 206. And then this is an RNAV GPS, so we got an LPV approach, so here's where we got our minimums from 452 Barrow. We can't use the AGL. It's 250 feet above the ground, but that's only for, uh, that's just for reference. We, I think, technically can't use that unless, unless we're like in an auto land. I don't think we're, we're not certified for that or something. Somebody explained it to me a while back on YouTube. I think I did an ILS and I used, yeah, I used the radar altimeter for the landing and they, they let me know that technically you can only do that with a cat two or three approach if it's a cat one ILS then whoa what's that glitch cat one ILS you can only use Barrow for the minimums oh, I lost everybody it was nice knowing you guys 35% torque on the TBM nice it looks like I can go a little more I'm bringing it up to like 550 Bonanza 632, Alpha Bravo, Squawk 5260, identity. Squawking 5260, and identity. All right, so Bonanza we're cleared for the RNAV 36, which means we can um, we can take it all the way down. He said to stay until stay to 2,000 feet until established on final. Um, but November I think, 672, Bravo. yeah, it's already going to do that because we have the VNAV for that waypoint, Reroy, where we Charlie. turn for the final approach course. So we'll be at 2,000 when we get there, and then we'll be turning to establish on final, and it's only a 200 foot difference, so anyway, I'm just gonna let it, let it continue down to 1,800. So we got 1,800 set here, V-Path. And once we get to 10,000, we'll set our landing light on. All right, let's go ahead and get the November Golf Let's go ahead and get the real ATIS. Copenhagen Center on 129er decimal 48. All right, ASOS 120.775 in COM2 2775. All right, 775. Alpha November Golf Contact Melbourne Center on 125 decimal 8. Solid overcast at 3100 feet. Temperature 14. 2.7 Altimeter 2981 2981 Visual Approach is in use Advise on initial contact you have information hotel Alright we have Monticello part of hotel Ellis Field We're gonna go 2981 025 Tree Zulu Now let's get the rest of it Wind Tree 20 at 11 Visibility 10 Sky conditions Solid overcast at tree 100 feet Temperature one four. It's changed. All right, we got the whole thing now. Altimeter Let's go ahead and turn that frequency one. off. Switch back up to the top comm radio, and then we might get Little Rock Approach one one nine point eight five, which is on the chart. So I'm gonna put that in. All right, there we go. All right, we're at twelve thousand feet. All 
All right, we got two nine or eight one set for the altimeter, and the winds changed, so this is not accurate compared to what we just heard on the on the ATIS. It says it's an A sauce, but the A sauce gave us the winds are three two zero at one one. Um, so that's better for us. It's only a forty degree rough. Roughly 40 degree difference compared to the like 70 or 80 degree wind Hybrid difference. Hybrid Echo, descend and maintain 6,200. Expect further descent instructions shortly for the RNAV runway 36 approach into Pine Bluff. Oh, okay. Descend and maintain 6,200. Hyper 6 Echo. Alright. 6,200. Alright, 11,000 feet. Wonder why they're stopping us. Six tree echo, descend and maintain six thousand two hundred. Descend and maintain six thousand two hundred. Piper six three echo. All right, so I'm gonna switch to vertical speed because this is based off our glide path to like for a continuous descent. So I'm gonna hit VS and get us down faster. We're at 180 knots. 180 times five is 900. So this is going to be a little more than 3 degrees. I'm going to go 1,200. Let's do like 1,300. I just want to get down sooner to that altitude so we level off and then he gives us the other. Echo, descend and maintain flight level 020. That's not a flight level. <laughs> not in the States, it's not. Is there even a... what? Hyper 6 3 Echo, descend and maintain flight level 020. There is no such thing as flight level 020 in the United States, sir. We're going to get a number, aren't we? Piper 63 Echo, descend and maintain flight level 020. Unable. There's no such thing as flight level 020. This <laughs> is going to keep saying the same thing. All right. Yeah, same thing on the last approach. All right, we'll just go down to 2,000. <laughs> He's not replying. Six three echo. Roger, my apologies for the confusion. Ooh. Descend and maintain 6,200. What? <laughs> Descend and maintain 6,200, Piper 63 Echo. <laughs> oh, he's messing with us. All right, landing light on. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> I thought this was Murica. I know. Flight level zero. When I hear it, I actually am very confused because it. Six three echo. Understand, unable to maintain 6,200. What altitude can you maintain? No, we're okay. We can maintain 6,200. Hyper 63 echo. Yeah, did you mean 2,000 feet? This is America. <laughs> we make it confusing by having different sayings for the same thing. Altitude. It actually makes sense. I actually, I actually like the difference between the flight levels. But in Europe, it's not. It's not like. Are there? Are there flight levels as low as 2,000 in Europe? I think the lowest I've heard of is like 5,000 maybe in Germany. So even for them, it's 2,000 feet up until flight level 050. I don't know what the lowest flight level in, in the world is, though. Maybe there is a flight level 020 somewhere. Piper 63 Echo cleared for the RNAV runway 36 approach into Pine Bluff. Descend and maintain 2,000. Report established on final. Cleared for the RNAV 36 approach. Descend and maintain 2,000 until established. Piper 63 Echo. All right, he gave us the same as last time. Now. We're going to go down to 1,800 again. And we're going to get VNAV on instead. And we're just going to slow our descent until we hit that vertical profile. And it's a slower descent, so I can add a little power. Amsterdam's really low. Yeah, I've, I've pretty much never... I don't know if I've ever used ATC in Europe. I should do that. Without the fear of uh, talking to a real human, too. I should try that out and... Um, experience the flight levels under 180. Could be cool. Change it up. Or if we do that uh, South America group flight on the weekend, maybe that's a candidate... Could do some IFR in South America. Check out the mesh. Oh, who bought the meshes earlier? Uh, oh, it was Runman. 
Runman on Discord said he bought... Uh, oh, he said there was a mesh pack. It must not be on the marketplace. So I think I would have seen it last week. All right, so we have info information hotel 2981 on the altimeter that's already set. All right, we are not descending at the required speed, so we'll or the required um vertical descent rate here. So we'll catch up to it basically. It'll catch up to us. There we go, V path. All right, now V V path is taking over. I'll bring it back down to f about 550. There we go on the torque. Good to go, 6,000 feet. Landing lights on. We can probably turn our prop heat off now. Four degrees out. Leave pedo heat on. And cabin altitude. It's down to 201 feet, that's all done. All right, so double checking here. Let's go ahead and overlay this on the map. There we go, beautiful. All right, we already have the minimum set. So we're going all the way down to 1800. It's gonna step us down to 2000 first, then 1800 by Esico, and then we'll get vertical guidance with the LPV, down to 452 minimums. Final approach course is 358. And we have Little Rock approach put in there already. Oh, and then it has Unicom. Wait, is this untowered? This is untowered, so we'll get 123.0 for our CTAF frequency. Moonraker 5, November Golf, Copenhagen Center. Moonraker. Contact Bremen Radar on 124.075. Whoa, what the heck? What was that? Did we just get hit? <laughs> what was that? All right, let's pull our let's pull our torque down a bit more. That was some crazy turbulence. Let's go check on the pillows. Uh. Iris Extreme Echo Pine Bluff Airport at your two o'clock one eight miles. Change to advisory frequency approved. Report cancellation of IFR or missed approach this frequency. Take care. You can cancel our IFR. We have the field inside Piper Six Three Echo. I, just, I have it in sight because of you guys are over there. Thanks, guys. <laughs> are you a Boeing? Oh, no. All right. They're going to have a Squawk VFR. Echo, roger. Radar service is terminated. Squawk VFR. Frequency change approved. Squawk VFR. Frequency change approved. Hyper 6063 Echo. Thanks so much. Have an excellent evening. Okay. Let's go VFR. Now let's get over to CTAF, 123.0. Let's double check that over here. Yep, right at the top, 123.0. And let's see, we're landing on 18, and we'll be a turn off to the right for parking. All right, switch over to CTAF. Now let's see how far away we are. About 15, or between, between 10 and 15 miles just based on the ring. All right, field's right over there somewhere. All right, we're gonna bring it down to 400. We can bring it as low as around 300 on the torque until we get the gear yelling at us. Before we get it yelling at us to put the gear down. Pine Bluff traffic. Piper 6 3 Echo is setting up for the RNAV runway 36 approach. We are on a 12 mile final. Pine Bluff. ASOS. 
Uh, oh, it says 2978. That's weird. We just listened to it. I got 2981, right? Maybe uh, maybe the METAR got updated. Let's see. Here, the METAR 2980. Let me see if we hit B, what we get. 2982. All right, I'm going to leave it at 2981. The SIM says 2982. The ASOS on the audio, on the radio, said 2981. The METAR says 2980. <laughs> Take your pick. And the one you said it's 2978. <laughs> what a mess. All right, 150 knots, making our right turn. Sink our heading bug around. We're gonna get fuel pumps to manual, ignition to manual. Rudder trim is at zero. Flaps are up still. We're under 163 knots, so we can do gear and flaps whenever we're ready. All right, six miles until a Seco. So we'll just want uh, flaps one and gear when we hit the FAF. I think that'll be good. All right, now we're about a 10 mile final. Pine Bluff traffic, Piper 63 Echo, 10 mile final runway 36 on the RNAV. Pine Bluff. Line Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Pine Bluff is not super easy to see either. Maybe just nothing is easy for me to say anymore. Maybe there's a problem. I feel like everything is hard to say for some reason. All right, 3.4 miles until the FAF. Is this landing music? Mm, it's all right. Oh, no. All right, we're going to retire this song. This song has been in the rotation way too long. It's a little too happy. Next. Should probably hit the approach button now. All right, approach is hit, glide path. There's the diamond. Let's go gear down. Then we'll go flaps one. All right, three green on the gear, flaps one. Path in one mile. Winds were getting 16 from the left and 17 from the front, so. It was reporting, was it 10 knots? It was like 320 at 10, I think. This is not, I don't think this is up to date. All right, we're five mile final now. Glide path. All right, set the heading straight ahead. Go around at altitude is climb to 2000 direct, pay it. So we'll set our altitude to 2000 since we're on the glide path. Pine Bluff traffic, Piper 6 re echo, four mile final runway, three six on the RNAV, Pine Bluff. All right, 1500 feet, minimums are 460. Slow down and get flaps two. What's flaps two? 130 something? 136? 135. All right, flaps two. And then the white arc is full flaps. 118. All right, still got the glide path. Looking beautiful. Sink our heading bug again. And then minimums are 460. So we got about 600 to go. All right, point, point 0.5 miles till Wepper. Wepper is 1.7 miles from the runway right here. All 
All right, we passed Wepper. All right, one and a half miles. Let's get full flaps. Pine Bluff traffic. Piper, 6-3 Echo, short final runway, 3-6, Pine Bluff. All right, get down to like 90 knots or so. Wind is 12 headwind, 14 crosswind from the left. Another super fun landing. Whoa. There's that gust. All right, I need to keep the power in a lot more. Because when it gusts or it, when the gust, the gust can slow us down so fast. It's kind of scary. All right, that's our minimum. All right, it didn't say minimums, did it? All right, autopilot off and yaw damper off. It's going to be super fun. Especially the twist axis for the rudder. Ooh. Let me down. Oh my god. That that started good and then I had to like force it down. <laughs> oh. Yuck. That was a milk. That wasn't even milk, it was worse. 243 feet per minute. Check the pillow status. Uh, they didn't move that much, but most of them are on the ground already. Not great. That was a milk. Milked it for sure. <laughs> Fun landings today, though. Two crazy crosswinds. This was not as chaotic as the first one. First one was insane. I did not like that. No, sir. Pine Bluff traffic, Piper 63 Echo is clear of the runway, Pine Bluff. All right, let's get our parking brake. Oh, we got some rain on the windshield now, nice. Fuel pump to auto, ignition off. Strobe and landing light off, taxi light on. Flaps are up, reset the trim. See if anybody is on final. Where are we? Oh, FX is landing. I'm missing it. That's what I get for flying around in the clouds with the looking at rainbows. FX is down. Okay, let me fix the speed here. There we go. All right, we got based. Then water cool. Oh my god, the MU2. Look at it. Look at it. Everybody look at it. Don't make it uncomfortable, but look at it. Yeah, he's getting a little floaty like I did. Oh, so much better than mine. Beautiful. Very nice. Very nice, sir. 13 out of 10. Oh, wait, no, it's an MU2. 26 out of 10. Highest rating that could ever be given. In fact, 27 out of 10 is impossible. All right, water cooled at 700 feet. Oh, man, the, the rain's really coming down now. Let me move off. Pine Bluff traffic. Piper 6 Echo is taxiing to parking right now. Moving fast. All right, I'm done taxiing. Pine Bluff. Let's turn into that rain. If you can tell, we can kind of tell where it's coming from. All right, let's get avionics generator alternator off. This off. All the lights off. Taxi light off. And fuel cut off. Bam. All 
All right, we got a set of TBMs coming in. Does the ME2 have autopilot? I think it has like a basic autopilot. Um, it's like down and under the pedestal, like to the right of your right foot, kind of. Oh, look at that crab. And um, I don't know that it can capture vertical guns. I think it can. It's like a very basic custom autopilot, but it does have it does have one. It can work with uh, GPS. I think one of the variants has a... Is it a 530? Very nice. 12 out of 10. It's not an MU2, so the rating cannot be higher than uh, 20, fortunately. All right, here we go. Another TBM 930 coming in. Lake Pilot coming in fast and furious. I think he was just hand flying it. He was not on the uh, normal like final approach course. He just like turned it in. He's like, I don't need an instrument approach. One landing, two landings, three landings. He's going for four, four landings, five landings, six. We'll count the last one that touched the nose wheel touched. Six landings in a row showing everybody off, showing everybody up. All right. Yeah, whatever. That's fine, man. I barely did one. The man did six. You know, I'm almost done being embarrassed by you guys with these landings. Having you landing so much better than me and so many more times than me. It's kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can take it anymore. I'm going to have to only do auto landings from now on. I'm going to switch to full-time Phoenix Cat 3 ILS landings only. Just so I can get some good landings in and compete with you guys. It's not fair. Okay, let's shut this thing down. Uh, let's see. Environment control system off. Pull the bleed air. Turn the AC off. Great. Let's get the chalks down. Unload real time. There are no passengers. So it doesn't even matter. All right. Say intentions. You've been great today. Eh. Say intentions it was like a 7 out of 10 today. It did do some weird stuff with those approaches. But I'm sure it'll be fixed after we do all the... Um, unplug the GPU, yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's put on chalks. Prop cover. Should probably turn off the battery. Pedo cover on. And back over here. Gotta deliver the goods. Heck yeah, no dog this time. So I just parked over here away from everybody like the awkward kid. Whew, that was pretty good. Hey, we hit four hours. It wasn't an eight hour stream as was uh, suggested earlier, but I think that'll do. Cha-ching, we made the money. Dude, look at this thing. Hey, slow down the camera. There we go. We can get inside here and look at the avionics, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, are you flying the classic version? Maybe it only shows the classic version. But there is one that has, um, I think it's a 530 and a 430 here. And the autopilot's right here. It's so funny that I can go in even though I'm not flying it. <laughs> what are you doing with that? This is the autopilot. So there's like a master on switch, an engage button, that heading... Uh, track is like nav mode, I think. Then there's glide slope. I think capture might be for VOR specifically, and then glide slope, and then altitude hold. And then I think this down up that's going crazy right now is for, um, I think that's just for pitching up and down uh, for your vertical speed. But yeah, it's been a while since I've been in the, the MU2. The thing is just beautiful though. It just looks so good. Whew. All right, guys, that was awesome. I guess I got, I'll take a picture of you guys. I'm not. I'm not there. I, I'm not close. Close to everybody else, but I'm just gonna be taking pictures of you. It's a little weird, but don't worry about it. All these M500s. All right, dudes. Good games. Let me find Lake Pilot. He was flying again out there. Whoa. 
Whoa, what's going on? <laughs> All I'm doing is setting the target. Nope. Apparently I'm not setting the target today. It's no good. Oh, you guys disappeared again. All right. <laughs> That's why it's not working. Good timing. All right, guys. Good game. Nice flights today. That was, uh... Oh, you're... and you guys are back now. Those are some crazy crosswinds we had. I mean, we, we were in the soup most of the time. That's what I wanted to do. I didn't even spend that much time looking for the bad weather, but there's so many storms going on on the East Coast, like the Southeast and the Midwest. It was kind of hard to not find them, so... That was good stuff. Love the M500. And, um... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Dukes. We'll see what we get on Thursday. Hopefully there's at least one plane to check out for Marketplace Thursday. If not, I'll, I'll end up buying something anyway, as usual. So I'll see you guys on Thursday. Um, if you want to know the time zone and all that for the event or for the next stream, it's listed in events in the Discord. Link to the Discord's in the chat right now. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Thanks. Thanks to you guys for flying along as usual. Good to see y'all. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. Two days from now, same time as today, 5.30 Pacific time. Hope to see you guys then. And uh, yeah, have a great night or day. And I'll, I'll see you guys then. Talk to you on Discord. See you. Bye. Oh, I forgot to say thanks for all the... I'm such a bad streamer. Uh, and yeah, David, thanks for the dollar, the super chat. Ben, I said thanks earlier. I think he left earlier for the super chat. Delta and Chris. and uh, Delta and Chris with the six months of membership. Thank you guys. Raccoon with the $5 super chat earlier and Josh with the five gifted memberships at the start of the stream. Appreciate all the support. And thanks to all you guys for flying along and hanging out in the chat. All right. That's a proper goodbye, right? That's a little better. <laughs> thanks again, guys. All right. Have a good night. See ya. See you for real this time. Bye-bye.